Stadium in Denver on a rainy, rainy night. The Pacific Division leaders, the Denver Gold, host the Los Angeles Express with the newcomer Steve Young. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire. I said, Steve Young, let's talk quarterbacks. Let us talk Steve Young, the $40 million man. <laughs> All the pressure is on Steve Young. I had a great chance to talk to him today. The thing about it is he's not had enough time to practice, Jim. But the one thing John Hale says about Steve Young, he's a very, very intelligent quarterback, and he does his homework. Now, let me ask you about another quarterback, or rather ex-quarterback, Craig Morton, and what he does as far as coaching this Denver Gold team to the successful season it has so far. Well, if that old cliche is that the, the, they have the player's quarterback, I guess it applies to Craig Morton. They have very short practice sessions, very few meetings. They have a picnic every Thursday afternoon with the families. And he says, if we lose the ball game, so what? Sounds like your kind of man. <laughs> a rainy night, it has held down the crowd, but a big game, and we'll come back in a moment. Now let's go back to you, Tom Me. Thank you very much, Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. You know, Paul, John Hadle, the head coach of the LA Express, has said all along, our big problem is offense. We're only averaging 10.6 points a game. Steve Young is supposed to perk up that LA Express offense. My question to you, Paul McGuire, with the short time he's had to get ready, is Steve Young really ready to play? As the fact that he's only had 14 actual days of practice. 14 actual days of practice starting a game tonight against the division leader. I think that should answer the question. Tom, let's go back to you. Okay, and keep dry, gentlemen. Too bad it's raining in Denver. They expected a crowd of over 50,000 tonight. The rain will no doubt keep that down. The Denver Gold with a chance to put together a four-game winning streak. That would be the longest in their brief history. For the Express, a team of 31 rookies, a chance to meld things together even better than they have so far and come up with their third straight win on the road. They're undefeated on the road, 2-0, coming into tonight's game. from kickoff in rainy Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. The Denver Gold 5-1, the LA Express 2-4. This is a rematch from a game played in the very first week of the USFL season this year at the uh, LA Memorial Coliseum. That game was tied up 10-10 late in the fourth quarter, and then the Denver Gold exploded for 17 points to win at 27-10. In fact, the Denver Gold, all five of their victories have been sewn up not until at least midway through the fourth quarter of play. So the Denver Gold, a very exciting team for their fans to watch doing unexpectedly well with a record of 5-1. and one. You know, a lot has been thrown at LA Express quarterback Steve Young. We've all heard about the money he's making, but he's only had two weeks, really, to prepare for tonight's game. Our Paul McGuire asked Steve Young how he's coping with the little preparation time. I'm used to having spring ball and a summer to work out, then a tr training camp, and then getting into the season. And I didn't have the luxury of this, but you just do with what you have. And I think that uh, we are young. They expect a lot out of me after 14 days, and we just have to go with it. And uh, we, we're ex a lot is expected of me, and all I can do is go out and give it my best shot. What's the feeling with your football team playing on defense, playing against the $4 million quarterback? Well, we all look at it as an opportunity for us to uh, prove, prove our worth as far as the money value. And also we look at it as a chance to uh, get a good jump in the standings as far as the division is concerned. Oh, how true that is. The Denver Gold wins tonight. They have a three-game lead over their nearest competitors, Arizona, in the Pacific Division. Now let's take a look at some key players. First of all, for the visiting LA Express, you have to start with a young quarterback from Brigham Young, Steve Young. Last week, 19 of 29, 163 yards, one TD pass, one interception against the New Jersey Generals. He also ran for 32 yards. He's one of the Express's leading rushers. Express has had really uh, not a very good rushing attack. That's one thing John Hale wants to shore up as well as Steve Young passing the ball a little bit better than he did last week. One of Steve Young's uh, top targets, Jojo Townsell, second year out of UCLA, caught five balls last week. On defense, the former veteran from the Dallas Cowboys from UNLV, defensive back Aaron Mitchell. He'll be a guy to watch tonight. For the home standing, Denver Gold. Quarterback Craig Penrose, a former backup to Craig Morton with the Denver Broncos. Penrose, 10 of 13 last week. That's right, he only threw 13 times last week against Arizona, but he was 7 for 7 in the second half. He has completed over 66% of his passes. Greg Penrose, he's not quick by his own admission. He's not spectacular, but he's gotten the job done for Denver this year. Another man who's gotten the job done, running back Harry Sidney, ran for 111 yards last week against Arizona. And don't forget Dave Stahls, defensive end formerly of Tampa Bay and the world champion Oakland Raiders from the NFL. 
Dolls with a chance to lead the Denver Gold to a championship in the USFL. It's rainy, but the spirits are high in Denver, Colorado is the gold, a five-point favorite over the LA Express. Let's see if they'll do it. Let's go to Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire. Thank you, Tommy. The temperature, 34 degrees. Rain is to turn to snow. The wind is gusting between 15 and 25 miles an hour. That brings the chill factor way down. Since three hours before game time, this steady rain has been falling. John Hadle, who coached with the Denver Broncos last year, John Elway, now the coach of Steve Young, the head coach of the Express, and on the near side, Craig Morton, the loosey-goosey type coach of the Denver Gold. Says he time is wasted, and he is next to a post that that's not right. Johnny Sedeas will kick it off, and the deep man is Leonard Harris. And this ball game in the driving rain is underway, and will be taken by a man on the far side there, knocked down, and knocked down beautifully by John Truitt who just came in, and you can tell that it was Kevin Williams who returned the kick, one of the men on the side over there. Denver won the toss and will put the ball in play at about the 19-yard line. Now keep in mind also the Denver Bears have opened their season in triple-A ball here, and so there is an infield here that they'll have to play over as Penrose checks in. Penrose, in last week's game against Arizona, which they thoroughly dominated 17-7, only through 13 times. Vincent White, 44. Harry Sidney, 24. Your setbacks. Leonard Harris, 80. Elmer Bailey, 83. Your wide receivers. Bob Bizzolik, 89. Your end. Rogers and Northley, the tackles. John O'Keefe, the guard. Tom Davis, the center. That is Vincent White. White gets across the 20, and that's about all. Dragged down at the 21-yard line. And you can see that the cornerback, Alonzo Smith, making his first start. A rookie out of TCU, number 21, came up to make the tackle. Well, Denver's doing something you expect, especially in this weather. They're going with two tight ends. They're, they're going to go with Nizolik, number 89, at one side, and Victor Hicks, number 87, the other side. Well, they've also made some changes on the express defense. It is Fletcher Jenkins, 90, Georgia Tika, 75, Dewey Forte, a rookie, 71, and Charles Ursay, outside of tackle, 79, the rest of their defense in a moment. Second down at about nine. And this is White again, coming off this side and gets to about the 23 and put down hard there. By number 54, Howard Carson, the middle linebacker. On the left side, Kevin Turner, 50. On the right side, David Howard, 58. The corners are Wyman Henderson, 22. And Alonzo Smith making his first start, 21. He made a tackle in the first play of the game of the corners. White Rain, another rookie out of Oklahoma. And Aaron Mitchell, the veteran former Cowboy and Buck, number 34, the safety. Matter of fact, there are 32 rookies on that express team. 32. <laughs> Third down and five. Ben Rose, flag goes down. White carries the ball and is dragged down from behind by David Howard, the linebacker on that side, number 58. Not enough for the first down, but a flag went down immediately. That will give us a chance to tell you who the officials are. As Bill Parkinson gives the illegal motion or procedure penalty. He was our referee on Saturday night down in Jacksonville. Illegal formation. Not enough men in the line of scrimmage on the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Ray Malavasi, former head coach of the Rams, now coaching the defense of the Express. We got 11. And so now they will refuse the penalty, and coming on is Steve Gort. To kick the ball away, and the deep man is Anthony Allen, standing at his own 36. Allen, no fair catch for it, drop the football, battle for it, flag goes down. And the officials say that Denver got it, looked like number 47 Trimble. Or Daryl Hemphill, one of the two, number 25. In any event, remember, a flag also went down on the play. Number 47 for the L.A. Express. West is the man that came up with the football. L.A. got it back. And a legal block. OK, 
Okay, right through Anthony Allen. If you looked at Anthony Allen right on that plate, Jim, Anthony Allen was looking downfield and was not looking at the ball. You see 47 West ends up with the football. There was an illegal block. That's going to move the ball back an additional 15 yards. That didn't help at all. Illegal block, ball the way. Number 21 on the return team. First down. Nevertheless, Steve Young's team will come out and not have that bad a field position. Better than the 20-yard line. 12.54 to go with Mile High Stadium, and the score is no score with the Express getting the ball for the first time. Del Gray, the lone setback. Jojo Townsell, Anthony Allen, Ricky Ellis, the wide receiver. Young, Del Gray carrying the football, and Gray is knocked down by Kelvin Newton, number 53, the linebacker on that side. We gave you the wide receivers. More than often, the Express will use but one setback. But tonight, they may go to the eye back and use Tony Bodie on some place. And it looks as though Bodie's coming into the lineup right now, number 24. So there'll be two setbacks. Your tight end is Mike Sherrod. Zimmerman and Hart to tackle. Jones and Durant to guard. And Mike Luther at center. Second and nine for 22. And not much. Thornton comes in to make the stop. As we take a look at the defense, normally they play a 3-4, but Paul will tell you what they're doing tonight. They're going to a 4-2-5 like Birmingham uses. So it's Bruce Thornton, 60, Dave Stahl, 77, Pat Oakland, 79, Calvin Turner, 99, your front four. The linebackers are Kelvin Newton, number 53, Bill Matthews, number 51, and your five defensive backs are Dave Martin, 13, Nate Miller, 23, your corners, David Dumar is 21, Tom Sullivan, 32, your safety, and the fifth back is Dale Hemphill, number 25. Third down from the shotgun, Young gets the ball to Gray, he's got the first down, and more. Gray is across the 40, across the 50, Gray cuts it inside the 30, down inside the 25-yard line where David Martin finally makes the tackle. First down the Express. And Mel Gray, who led Purdue for the last two years in rushing, picks up the first pass of the night from Steve Young and rambles inside the 25. Jim Shotgun, Mel Gray comes out. No one covered Gray. Look at that in the middle of the field. You don't see a black shirt for about 10 yards. And all of a sudden, David Martin is playing off. Way back, and he's got blockers. That's 484 in front of him. And Allen... But look at the play that David Martin makes. He goes through two blockers and makes the tackle on Gray. After that 52-yard run, Kevin Nelson comes in to give Mel Gray a breather. Nelson number three. And Nelson's got the football now. Good penetration by the cornerback on that side. That was Hemphill who made the good penetration. And a loss on the play. Back to the 25-yard line. You got a feeling that that was Hemphill's man because the fifth back... According to what we found out, the fifth back is supposed to cover the back, which would have been Mel Gray coming out of the backfield the last time. Hemp Hill didn't do it that time on the running play. Jimmy came across and just wiped out the offense. Second and 12, 10.45 to go. First quarter, no score. A miserable night weather-wise in Denver. Yesterday was magnificent. Tomorrow is supposed to be magnificent. Second down 12. Young, pressure on him, gets the ball intended for Ricky Ellis, but he is unable to catch the ball. Dumars with good coverage. There's a good look at Steve Young out of BYU. All right, Kelvin Turner, 99, is going to force him on the outside. There's a play-action pass. You see Steve Young, he's rolling to his left. Being left-handed quarterback, isn't that natural? He's throwing the ball to the outside and to Ricky Ellis, but a great play by David Dumars, number 21, to break the ball up. Third down and 12. Ellis goes out. Tony Bodie comes in. So there are two setbacks. Shotgun called by Steve Young. High snap gives the ball to Nelson. Blackers in front of him. He cuts inside. He has got the first down and more inside the five-yard line. Kevin Nelson, the rookie out of UCLA, Gives the Express first and goal to go. John Hale said nothing fancy today. We're just going to line up and go, and they did. No motion at all. They're just going to go. They've got the guards pulling. Jones and Durrett, 60 and 65. Now, you see Durrett is out front. There's, jo there's Durrett, 60, 65 is Jones. 
And then Nelson just gets an excellent block downfield by Jones and takes the ball down to, what, about the three-yard line. It is a 23-yard pickup. They've had a 52-yard pass play and a 23-yard running play. The Express not going for offense. formation. That is Kevin Nelson. Blockers in front. Nelson looking for the end zone and has it. Touchdown Express. What an impressive drive. Started back at the 21. Three-yard pickup for Kevin Nelson, his third touchdown of the year. Kevin Nelson's going to have Tony Bodie out in front of him and also Mike Durrett number 60. Just take a look at it. There's Bodie 24. 60 is Durrett. Bodie gets a great block on the corner and the outside Nelson scores. So the gold, as loose as they are, shell shot. As the day has come to add the extra point, and it is good. 9.29 to go. First quarter. It's 7 to nothing. The Express leads the goal. A rainy night at Mile High Stadium. And Craig Penrose, who is, as you can see, fifth among the USFL leading passers, being called on by the fans while we're waiting to get something going. After the weekend, Sight is the leader. Penrose started the weekend as the leader, but of course he's not yet played his game. Craig Morton, looking on, he can get excited. And he has just seen a team move 89 yards against him with two walking plays. 52 and 23 yards. Then they off to kick off. And the ball is blown off the tee. Funny, Paul, how we had all that rain last year and we thought, well, maybe not this year. But here we are again. It's that time of year. I love Monday night. Love it. Williams over there again. Off the 10. Look out. And there's another good play by West. Troy West, who saved them on the fumble punt, gets down under this kickoff and makes a good play. Okay, here's a touchdown again with Nelson. He just got Bodie 24 on front of him and Mike Durrett outside. You just take a look at Bodie. Bodie gets an outstanding block on Nate Miller right there, and that opens the hole for Nelson to score the touchdown. It is not often, Paul McGuire, that you get a seven-yard kickoff return. Maybe a punt return, yes. But a kickoff return, the ball is at the 10-yard line. Bailey in motion. Sidney, who had a great day last week, wrestled down by Forte. Sidney gained 111 yards last week, his first 100-yard day of his career. And he's a three-year veteran out of Kansas, number 24. Forte has been moved to tackle Ustry to end with the injury to Eddie Meek Cleaver Weaver, who leads the club in sacks. And look at the rate. It looks like a replay of last Monday in Birmingham. Well, Morton said that his team likes to play in this rain. They've got mutters on their team, and they practice in it all the time, so why not play in it? Second down, five from the 15. Sydney again, same spot, another couple of yards. It'll be third down in about three. And I think that's Forte, 71, getting up again. He's a rookie out of Matthew Cookman. You have to keep in mind one thing. The Denver Gold a week ago, as Jim said before, only threw the ball 13 times, but they completed 10 passes. Now, field position is not a problem with them. And most everything that they run off the play action uh, is a play action pass, and it comes off of all of their running plays. The Express lead by seven. It's third down and two for the goal. And Vincent White picks up the first down. Hanging on is Wyman Henderson, number 22. The first time these two teams play, it was 10 all at the end of three quarters. And the goal got 17 in the final quarter. All right, we're seeing Vincent White. Harry Sidney, number 24, gets the block on the outside for White to get around the corner. And he got it on Wayman Henderson. But that's a big man coming outside. And when the hole is there and they're playing everything to the inside, you can throw tosses in the rain. Mark the ball at the 24, first down. That is Victor Hicks being signaled to take his stance on the other side. Still two tight ends. The blitz is on, and Carson nails Penrose back at the 16-yard line. Jim, this was going to...
going to be the first pass. They had Howard, David Howard, 58, and Carson, 54, in there. The, the blitz is on by the two inside linebackers. You can see Penrose is back to fake a blitz, and there's no one there. Vincent White, number 44, gets caught up in the fake, and he gets nailed on the way through. Watch the two linebackers in the middle. Here they come. There's no block on them. 52, Tom Davis, the center, misses one. And poor Vincent White, he got caught up just trying to take a fake in the shuffle. Now three wide receivers are in, Harris, Bailey, and Arnold on second down and 15. Shotgun, ball handed off, that is Sidney, and check that, that is Bill Johnson. Johnson still on his feet. For Johnson, that is only his third carry all year long. After that run, I think I might give him the ball just a little bit more. He's 6'1", 220 pounds. Gets the ball out across the 20-yard line, but they still have a bundle to go to pick up the first down. Third down and 12. We want him more. Denver leading its division. You know that. Should they win tonight, they would have a three-game ball over Arizona, a four-game ball over Los Angeles, and a seven-game over Oakland. Five defensive backs for the Express. Shotgun, Penrose, third and 12. Has the time. That man, Don Hadel, said today is going to be an outstanding, strong safety. First of all, Penrose telegraphs the play all the way. Watch Penrose. He's going to look out to his right. He waits, he waits, he waits, and then he hangs the ball up in the air. White Drain just times it perfectly. Here's Penrose looking out. Watch what White Drain does. There it is. It was for Johnson, number 34. He just steps in front of Johnson and scores a touchdown. And what you did not see was... The Denver goal line just really pulled over the express line, and the snap was bad, but of course the penalty is in effect, and they'll get another shot. Oh, something else to be pointed out. The express, the express have been averaging about 10.5 points per game. They already have 13 in this first quarter and are looking for 14. Deus gives them 14. Admittedly, seven of those are on defense, but it was also the same. Pepper Rogers is watching and thinking, uh-oh, <laughs> I got to play those folks next Saturday night in Los Angeles. And you'll see the game live here on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock on the Pacific Coast. The penalty, funny thing, they were going to tee the ball up on the 30, but remember the penalty was against the goal, so they move it out to the 40. Even the goal had moved them to express territory, misreading what the penalty was. But they asked to kick off. Now they've done what they hope to do. They get their man out there, John Arnold. They've kicked to that side every time. Arnold again gets the ball out. And they've just not been able to break off any kind of decent kick return, kicking it to the right side. And that's the third man on that right side that's returned the ball. All right, now we're going to take a look at, that's what I was talking about before, Jim. Penrose is looking all the way to the outside to Johnson. When he did that, Dwight Drain just read it perfectly and scored a touchdown. You got to remember some, one thing, and I know we're going to keep repeating this, but you got to understand on, on the LA Express, there are 32 rookies on this football team, and they're just starting to come together. From the 20 yard line, first down. Second man through, Vincent White, and he breaks one tackle and gets about the 22. And they're playing them tough, playing them tough. Kevin Turner makes the stop. Well, I'm sure in the state of Oklahoma, where the court is as high as an elephant's eye, they're saying Dwight Drain, he's one of our men. He played three years as a starter for Barry Switzer and the Sooners. One of those 32 rookies. Second down and seven from the 23. 14 to nothing, the Express. 4.25 to go, first quarter. First down, written down by Turner again, the linebacker. Well, the Express 
Mets are one year and six games and about a quarter old, and Green's interception was the first in their history return for a score. This is the first time they went to the regular pro set, and that time he's got Harry Sidney coming out of the backfield, and you see Aaron Mitchell, he, almost, he misses the play in there, but you've got to cover the backs coming out, and one thing, Jim, with there's still three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, Denver, even though being down 14 points, they will not come out of their game plan. Oh, no, plenty of time. 33-yard line is where the ball is marked, first down. Ball is thrown out over the middle. It was intended out there for Bo Matthews and knocked down by Robinson. And there's going to be a personal foul for roughing the passer, which was totally unnecessary. George Atika, the play was over, and Atika to full had a scene just poverty. All right, we're going to have a good play by Robinson, number 99. Now watch, his job really, even though it looks like he's not pass rushing, is screens and draws. He hits the ball coming out, and George Achika, number 75, in the back, hit Penrose after the ball had been thrown. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 75 on the defense, first down. And this is as far down the field as the goal has been thus far tonight. The ball is at the 48-yard line. A chilly night in Denver, Colorado. That fella Kelly, what a quarterback he is out of the University of Miami, has Houston up top 7-0. A 51-yard touchdown pass. Quick pitch back. Here comes Vincent White. They spring it out well. White's got no place to go except down. And down he goes with a loss on the play with Ussery putting him down, number 79, along with number 58, Howard. Charles Ussery. They have done a good job defensively tonight, Paul, and I keep looking that they're not that bad in defense. They're number five in the league on defense express. Well, when you have Georgia Chica, he makes a, a, a bad play by hitting the quarterback. Now watch, he's going to over-pursue. Here comes Achika, 75, down the line of scrimmage. Now watch what happens. When the back, Vincent White cuts back in, Achika misses him. He says, okay, but I got help from my friend. Second down and 12 from the 46. No place to go for Sydney, and I am really impressed thus far by the defense of the Express. They are playing tough. That is yet another one. The Express have not been picking up much on the ground at all. The thing you have to keep in mind is that Denver, Gold, they do not throw the ball a lot. And when they're in that kind of a situation, and you force them to throw, it is not normally what they do. Again, last week they only threw the ball 13 times, but they didn't have to. Against that Express defense, the Gold have carried the ball 10 times, averaging two yards a carry. There's Penrose on third and long. Sidney out of the backfield. He's got a long way to go and will only pick up about two yards. Penrose dropped very deep, only picked up about two as Howard puts him down. And they'll have to get rid of the ball again. Penrose coming off. And going deep will be Anthony Allen. Works out the puck, and he'll be standing in a puddle ball. Or what he's going to back out of that. <laughs> well, he'll be stepping into it. He'll be he'll take his steps very, very carefully, Gorch will, because he doesn't want to slip and miss the ball. Gorch gets the ball away. Anthony Allen at the 17. Backs up to the 15. And here he comes. He's a good one. And he gets it out across the 25. 110 to go. Lost to Denver, remember that was 10 all at the end of three quarters. Played Birmingham tough, then beat Oakland, which is winless, then beat San Antonio, which is one only one. Jacksonville, they played tough. The Mafus came off the bench and beat them. And then to New Jersey last week and Steve Young's debut. They were beaten 26. Denver, well, as you can see, they lost only to Michigan. Shut out. But other than that, it's been full steam, and they really humbled Arizona, the leading scoring team average-wise, before last week. L. George Allen's team to seven points on a guarantee by that man, Craig Horton, that Allen's team would never win here. From the 27, first down, Steve Young. He's completed one pass for 52 yards. Young with the blitz on him, escapes it. He loves to run, and Young picks up some yardage across the 30 to about the 33. A five-yard pickup, second down and five. Tackle made by Matthews. Well, Darrell Hampill, number 25, was on the blitz, and he's the fifth 
defensive back that we're talking about that they've gone for this game especially because of Steve Young. They've gone to a 4-2-5 defense and we were told that they were going to blitz a lot. Now they're going back to their basic 3-4 defense. Because they brought in Tony Bodie and they know they're in a running formation with the eye formation here. Oh, well, they're in their 3-4. Second on five. And there's Del Gray. And Gray's not going to get outside. Forced across there by Dave Stahl, who had a remarkable career in the NFL, including in 1983 with... The Oakland Raiders. The ball carrier for the Los Angeles Raiders. Well, that's right. <laughs> that's settled, isn't it? And I tell you what, stop me, because I know that through the season and next, I'm going to call them the Baltimore Colts. And it's the Indianapolis Colts. Yes. Got that? I heard down at about six. That's a tough thing about when, you, when you're doing USFL games in cities where there are NFL teams. You have a tendency sometimes because they've been established for so many years to call them by the NFL franchise. Third and six. Out of the backfield is Ellis, first down. Ellis tackled by David Dumars, but he's got the first down. Ellis is the leading pass catcher, and this is his 22nd. Well, Ellis normally would be coming out of motion out of the backfield. Now they got David Dumars, number 21, the defensive back trying to cover him. Ellis just comes across the middle. Young saw him, made the completion. It's the first down, and that's the end of the quarter. End of the quarter, and what a surprise it has been. Offensively, they marched 89 yards, where their team is behind 14 to nothing as we begin the second quarter. Here's Young back, going out to Gray. Gray runs out of the grass for one linebacker. There's knocked out of bounds after picking up a first down in gold territory at the 46. And Paul McGuire, we said 10.6 points for ball game for the Express. They had scored 13 points in the first quarter in their first six games all together. 14 in the first quarter tonight. Well, they are doing very well. Now, this is a screen pass all the way out to Mel Gray to the outside. You're going to see the blocking. Bill Matthews, number 51, the linebacker, just can't get there. Can't make the tackle. And just watch Mel Gray's legs now. It's not so much the great blocking downfield. It's his leg drive. First down, 46-yard line. have dominated this game. Gold haven't come close. Young rolling left. He's the left hand. As we said, he can run if he wants. And he runs out of bounds. Smart move. He was their leading rusher last week also, as well as gaining about 162 yards throwing the football. Here are the first quarter stats. And you can look all you want. 93 to 34 in total yards. But look at the time of possession. Jim, this is where, where I always said the time of possession, it does not mean a thing. If you don't use it and you don't score with it, you can put all, all the minutes you want on the board if you don't score with it. L.A., four minutes, a little over four minutes, and they've got 14 points. Denver, 10 minutes or something, they have nothing. Well, on the 44-yard line, I've got some news for you about that Houston game, disturbing news in a moment. Young, look out, down he goes. Line back on the place, Kelvin Newton puts him down. Back inside the 50-yard line, it's a 47. It'll be third down. And about 18 to go. Remember I told you, well, let's get the replay out of the way first. Calvin Newton, number 53. He's the, out, the left outside linebacker. Young just goes back to best. He's left-handed quarterback. He doesn't see Newton until the last second. This is something that Denver has to do with Young. Blitz almost every play. Well, we told you that Kelly of Houston has thrown a 51-yard touchdown pass. What an outstanding quarterback. He has left that game with Washington hurt. We don't know how hurt Jim Kelly is. That'll hurt Houston. On the 48, third and long, nearly 20 yards. Oh, here's Gray all by himself, trying to get around the linebacker and cannot get around the linebacker. That is Newton again, making the play, and now the Express will have to kick the ball away. Line of scrimmage, the 46-yard line. Young is four of five thus far for 78 yards. All right, let's take a look at Calvin Newton all the way. Now, he's dropping back because they know they have well over 15 yards to go. They'll give the dump pass to Gray. It's the toughest tackle you can make as a linebacker in the open field, like one-on-one, -on -one. and Mel Gray tried to put the moves on. Newton stopped him. Jeff Partridge to put the ball away to David Martin. Partridge right at the end of the skin of the infield for the Denver Bears. Rainy night, remember, ball is slippery. This is a dangerous play, a punt, and a punt return. They're coming. Partridge gets it away, line drive. Martin watches it, picks it up. And, oh, he's fumbled the ball, and down he goes. No one's touched him, he better touch him, and I'll do. 
The ball is the 14-yard line, and Craig Penrose in trouble again. The goal had moved into the territory to express only once tonight. That was just over the 50. They knocked out of the threat. They've been picked off and intercepted for a touchdown. They moved the ball 89 yards for a touchdown. Daily in motion. Penrose back to throw. Looking. And that is Bailey. First down at the 30-yard line. The hit taken by Aaron Mitchell, the former Cowboy and Tampa Bay Buccaneer. I like to call play action pass deep in your own territory, and you're going to see Elmer Bailey coming up. Now, Aaron Mitchell is there along with Wayman Henderson, number 22. They're both there, but that ball was right on target. A 17-yard pickup. Ball at the 32. Ball at the 32. Picks up nine yards, maybe only eight, but a flag is down in the backfield of the Denver goal. And it's going to be a legal formation. They were called for that once before. This time it was a legal motion. Number 83, Elmer Bailey, left a little bit too soon on the outside. That's something i got to get straightened out with Cal Laporte's officials. Now we'll wait for this call here. Illegal formation. That's that's the, I was going to say, if that's a legal motion, they got to change it because it's two different things. Because that is a legal formation, and the motion is the arm from the chest. Well, I was looking at Elmer Bailey, and he's, he's out talking to the official on the outside, and he, and, and he looked at him like, you know, I didn't move, but he, what did I do wrong? And, and that's where he is. He has to be. He was the guy that was called, but he wasn't up on the line of scrimmage. All right, wide to the right. Williams wide to the left. First down, 15. that he steps over. I'm not sure. There's 25 Hemphill. Look at the, like he was taking the hurdles. Here comes Mel Gray, and he's moving. But watch near the end. The outside player of Denver, I didn't get the number right away. Try to strip the ball. You better make the tack. A 40-yard return. And the Express and Steve Young have not had bad field position all night. Ten rows of company have never had good field position all night. Yet it's 14 seconds. the middle and the spike 
Great play by Mark is going to be called. Anthony Allen makes the stop. Now remember, if they judge it pass interference, it's 15 yards in a first down, and they may want the penalty instead of the catch. They're going to take penalty. Get 15 instead of 9. And the automatic first down. Bill Parkinson stepping it off. Takes the ball out to across midfield and in goal territory. I have heard nothing but the Express can't move the football. The Express can't score. From the first team of the defense, first down. And what has Steve Young been in camp now? Well, he's actually had about nine actual days with the first unit, Jim. But he's, uh, and that's not a lot, and especially in this kind of weather, throwing the football. That time, the Denver Gold did not put any pressure on it. They have to send a linebacker at least one each time. First down from 48. Short drop, looks out, in trouble. Young Bulls fires across the way. And that was Jojo Townsell making the catch. Paul, I want to bring up something that was written in a Los Angeles newspaper after Steve Young's debut. I know it's bad weather to check this, but they wrote out there in the debut of Young that he's got a good arm, but not a strong arm, that he stands flat-footed. So let's watch throughout the night. I see nothing but good things when I look out of Steve Young thus far tonight. Well, the, the criticism is that he has not thrown the ball down the field yet. And now, if you, if you remember the first quarter, he did not throw the ball deep. He's throwing everything into short areas. If those are open, with John Hadle's team, they'll take the short stuff. They'll take what you give them. Second down and 10. Young, Young breaking out of it again, looking to be hit, and down he goes. Showed a little maturity there, lost a couple of yards, but Young did not panic, did not put the ball up for grab, did not try to run into a morass of Denver goal players. He took the hit, lost a couple of yards, it's third and 12. I love his courage, but I'll tell you, sometimes you think maybe you better dump this ball. Here it comes. The blitz is on. There's Johnson, Thornton, Stalls. They're going to be chasing him. Now back to the outside. Calvin Turner is also chasing him. Now watch Young. He has time. He's going to throw it. Calvin Turner's there along with Dave Stalls, 77-99, and they run him out of bounds for a lot. He's got great courage, I'll tell you that. From the 49, third down, and 12 to go. Shotgun, a flag is down. They'll throw the ball out to the side, and Kevin Nelson's not going anywhere, is he? Coming up to make the stop is Nate Miller. Jim, there were two flags down. There was one at the start of the play, and I think there was a holding penalty in the middle of the LA Express line, because that was a, a flag that was thrown late. Here it comes. Holding, that's one. That's, that's all we get. We got one out here, and you know that had to be at the beginning, whether it's a legal formation, but they'll, if they'll talk about the the, the, uh, the bigger penalty, which is the 10-yarder. And the gold, is, the gold wants the biggie. Well, I'd make it, it's going to be fourth down. I refuse the penalty. Well, I guess they figure they got 20 yards to go, now 22 yards to go for the first down, and if they punt, they might have to punt. Still with the use of hands, number 57, from third down. Into the infield. Yeah, but I don't care. You're going to get the ball back. I, I don't understand why you would take a penalty on fourth down. The only thing I can think of is for field position, which they think they might be able to hold them here and get better field position. Otherwise, I'm with you. Style of play. That's what Craig Morton wanted. And the four wide receivers. Young hands off on the draw play to Kevin Nelson. Nelson's got some speed, but does not get the first down. Tackled across there by Tom Sullivan, the strong safety out of UCLA. And now they'll have to kick the ball away. About five yards. Oops, there's a fight on the field. Fight on the field. David Stalls mixing it up with Malcolm Moore. Moore 84 in white, Stalls 77 in the dark of Denver. And we'll slow things down for a moment to separate this. Normally they'll call a penalty on each man and then go ahead and punt it. Let's see what happens. Jim, they may eject them from the game. They may throw them out of the game. Stalls is coming off with his helmet off. Bill Parkinson went over to Craig Morton. 
He's also going to go over now to John Hadle and talk to him. The question is, are they throwing him out of the ball? They must, because Stoll just took his helmet and flung it at the bench. He must be out of the game. I'm just reading into it as actions only. Now, the way Hadle is reacting, I think he thinks that somebody's out of the game and can't stand it. You're going to control it. This is the best way I know how. Well, I tell you what, if you're going to lose a man, lose a reserve wide receiver while Denver loses a top tackle, if that's the case. Bill Parkinson will tell us. We hope. He'll tell us. Come on, Bill. He's still going to be fourth down. Darrell Hemphill is really upset. Go. Because this is after the play. Personal foul. Number 65 on the offense. He's disqualified. Personal foul. Number 77 on the defense. He's disqualified. Okay, Wayne Jones is out. When we look, there's Stalls who is out. When we look down, it was Moore who was in the battle, but obviously it all started with Wayne Jones, and he is out. And there's Wayne Jones who is out. Both men out. So they've lost the top offensive man. The Express have had the goal. A great defensive tackle with many years' experience. And I like the call, Jim. If you're going to eliminate this thing, you've got 10-27 to go in the second quarter. You don't want any fights on the field. I'm sick and tired of seeing two, a flag thrown down. This man, first of all, this guy, and they all stay in the game. No harm, no foul, that kind of a thing. Throw them out of the ball game and let's get on with it. Well, as I told you, that's what I fully expected to see. Double flag, double personal foul, let's get on. Instead, disqualification. Up here with 10.27 to go. Stalls, furious. He is with the Raiders. He is a designated factor of the Raiders. Remember him in the Super Bowl season? Jim, it's not like hockey where they have to leave the stadium or the arena. They can stay. But, I, you know, sometimes you want to do you want to. Now what the delay is now, I'm not quite sure. Well, it's, 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 first of all, Maybe he does have to leave. They're telling him. They're telling him to get off the bench. We saw Jones on his way. Now they're telling Stalls to get out. Well, he, it is like hockey. It is like hockey. He can, get, he, can get back, he can get back in the street clothes, I guess, but he can't go now. Now is Jones gone? He already went. We saw him walking along the sidelines with his helmet off. Okay. Partridge back to do the kicking again. Andrew looks like David Martin is deep. 14 to 7. The score. And they're coming and the flag is down. Good kick by Partridge. Driving Martin back. Well, it's going to bounce and go into the end zone. Now let us see what the flag was for. Denver gold at the 20. Or they'll kick it again. It was a legal formation charged against the Express. Do they want the ball or want them to kick it again? They will make him kick it again and get him back in there. They're going to come after him again. John Hale didn't look too happy, but you're ahead, John, by seven. John doesn't live too far from here since he was the quarterback and receivers coach of the John Elway Broncos last fall. Before moving to L.A. to take this head job. Martin going back again deep. Fourth down. And now 21 to go. Illegal formation. Remember, what, up middle line. remember what John said about Elway? He had Elway when he was, like said, with Denver last year. He's got Young here. And he said that, that Young is a better quarterback. I guess you would say that because he's on your team. Well, he said that he uh, has a very mature for a rookie approach to the game. Got 10 men up front. Parker's the kicker. Here they come. High. Martin inside the 20. Backing to the 13-yard line. And Martin looking for some running room. Lost the football! And I believe it belongs to the Denver goal. Getting up. Recovery by Getting up, getting up, number 23, Miller, makes the big play. Jim, he's going to get a sensational block as he's just about to make the turn right here by number 58, who is Kimmel. He gets a block there. Mark 
drops the ball, but they get the ball back. Ball is on the 22, 10.04 to go in the half. From the 22, after all of that, the goal only got two extra yards and almost lost the football. And Rose puts it out here, a flag is down. Out of bounds goes Leonard Harris. The catch is good, but the flag was down. It's against Denver. That's the what kick Georgia is, is. He's thrilled. Illegal formation again. What is that, the third illegal formation call tonight against the goal? you got to see where the line of scrimmage is. You know, and it's usually on a wide receiver, Jim, which, and, and they are at liberty to say to the official on the side, am I all right? What they got to do is get that man seven men up on the line of scrimmage, and as Paul is saying, one man just backs off a little bit, unaware of what he's done. That's what six men on the line of scrimmage, illegal formation, penalty. I think it was Leonard Harris, number 80, but what he is allowed to do is say to the official, am I all right? Houston now leading Washington 14 to 7. We're trying to check on the state of Jim Kelly, who is hurt. And rolls back, puts it up, and here's that man, Williams again! He lost the football incomplete. Kevin Williams, who went 73 yards for score, ran under that high throw from Penrose, but dropped the stopping wet ball. Jim, and he had Nazolik, his tight end, Bob Nazolik, 89, going down the middle, wide open. But here goes Williams again. He's running by Smith. Look at this. He had him. If the ball had been out further, he still should have caught the ball. The ball hit him right in the hand. But had it been about a little bit further, it would have been a touchdown had he caught the ball. But he did have the tight end. And if I know Babe Perilli, who was the offensive coordinator for the Denver Gold, they may come back with that tight end just going right down the middle of the field. So the Nolik is lining up on the right side, split about three yards. Second down, he's coming across the middle. And Rose is not going to him. He's going for Sidney, and Sidney picks up a couple of tough yards before he is knocked down across the way. There's a white green over there, along with Kevin Turner, to make the tackle. And now it is going to be third down and long. About nine. 9-11 to go. We're in the first half of what has been a wild, wild ball game. The Express leading 14-7. A game thus far of big plays on a big night from bad weather. It is cold. Temperature at 30 degrees. The wind gusting 10 to 25 miles an hour. So you, that puts the wind chill factor way down. Five defensive backs, three wide receivers. the gold will have to give it up. Penrose has laid the ball in there twice in three downs and twice his receivers dropped the wet ball. He had Vincent White one-on-one -on -one with David Howard, number 58, the linebacker, and the ball was out just a little bit too far. Remember, it's wet, but the ball was out a little bit too far. Had Vincent White been able to catch the ball, he might still be running. Five times, that's Anthony on the deep. Five times the gold of that third down. Five times they failed to pick up the first down. To kick the ball away. Standing inside is Tim. Where go? High. Anthony Allen there catch up the wet ball. He holds on to it and takes the seat at about the 32 yard line. 8.31 to go in Denver to 14 7. Greg Morton is using his backup nose guard, Steve Johnson, to replace Dave Stalls, disqualified from the game. Terry Crouch, a former Baltimore Colt, has come in to replace the guard. Wayne Jones, who was thrown out. And a reminder to Paul and I'll take a men and MVP, $1,000 to the College University of the Choice of that most valuable player of this game. Here's Young, quick pitch back, and it's great to throw a ball down here, intended for and caught, and stepping out of bounds. Too bad, because he really had it all in front of him, was David Hersey. Hersey in for his first play of the night. Paul, he was remarkably free, and had he been able to hold his position in the field, he might have had a touchdown instead of a 29-yard pickup. Well, at that time, they had Tom Sullivan. They had a play-action pass, and which time when Mel Gray came out and threw the ball, Tom Sullivan never got back, did not read it, and Hersey, if, if he, he had the presence of mind, got back in bounds because there was no one, really, as you said, nobody chasing him. Allen wide to the right, Sam Sell to the left. First down from the 38. Young quick pitch back to Gray. Gray is not going to go anywhere. They have lost the 
football. They're battling for it. Getting up for it. Coming out is the man of the Denver Gold. They say Steve Trimble got the ball back. Number 47. Now Gray Bumble will check it to see if it is Trimble who got the ball back. Jim, and that was another fumble. And, and number 72, Johnson, ends up with the football. Now Trimble picks it up. Put on the outside. Just came in. Okay, here it is on the outside. Now Gray's going going down. He fumbles the ball. Trimble 47 goes in and takes the ball out. Now he's not touched by a white jersey. He's up. He's running. He's going to fumble the ball. And Johnson, number 72, gets the ball back. Wild game. Ball at the 40. 14 to 7. Denver. They've got the ball. Henrow. You know he's going to come out throwing. He throws. Bang. Down goes. on Fletcher Jenkins hitting the quarterback, Greg Penrose. After the ball is thrown, he, hit not, he hits it with his forearm. That is the second roughing the passer penalty against Express tonight. A Chica guilty the other one. Well, we're going to hear the call, but you lied to me for the first time in all the years I've known you. What did I say? Before this game started, you said this game. Well, here it Personal comes. foul, roughing the passer, a blow to the head, number 90, first down. What you said to me that this game may go only an hour. <laughs> Take a look. Here's Penrose back to throw. Now watch after he throws the ball. There's Fletcher Jenkins, number 90. Watch his right arm. The shot right there to the head. And that's what the official call. 14 to 7. 7 and a half minutes to go. In the half. Ball at the 40 of Los Angeles. Penrose. The blitz is on and down he goes. Penrose taken down. By number 99, James Robinson, a rookie out of Princeton, All-American there, who has just been activated. Okay, Penrose is going back, does it? They had a full-scale blitz on on the outside. You see number 58, David Howard, but here's the shot coming up the middle by Robinson, number 99, and just leveled Penrose. Here it comes again. Take a look at it. No blocking in the front of the line. And that's number 70, Harold Northlake, oh, yeah, with block. Second down, 16 to go from the 46. And Rose to White, who hands the ball. Coming around the side is almost Bailey. Bailey is still on his feet. And you know what? After all that, he picks up maybe 20 inches at most. The other game being played tonight, Houston, I hope Kelly is not hurt badly. Apparently not. It was 7-0 Houston when he was hurt. It's now 17-7 Houston. Our score is 14-7, both games in the second quarter. Well, I was just watching Elmer Bailey running on the reverse, and he ran away from his blocker. He had out in front of George Yarno, number 66, and didn't let, wait for him to make the block. Five times they have had third down, and five times the goal have not gotten the first down. This is third and 15. They have everybody on the line of scrimmage as they're supposed to be there. Here's Penrose, and the ball is picked off again. That is Tyrone Justin. And he gets the ball back to the 31-yard line. Second time Penrose has been picked off tonight. One of those times for a touchdown. They're now 0 for 6. On third down situation, and a few boos for Craig Penrose. Well, Tyrone Justin, number 20, watch him read the play. He comes in from the outside and just takes the ball away from Elmer Bailey, number 83, and now he's running in the slot. He was just put in there, Paul, as a fifth defensive back. He'd lost his starting job to Smith this morning. This morning. <laughs> That's right, first down, put the ball at the 33-yard line, they express out the football, Steve Young, the quarterback. Young still with the football, Young down, hey, he can throw the ball downfield, he can throw the ball downfield, and send it for Anthony Allen, Nate Miller was right with it. They both go down, and no call. But that's a strong arm, is it not? That's down the field. And, that's and down Nate the Miller field. was there. All right, let's take a look at the blocking now. The play action pass again. Good blocking in the backfield. That was number 88, Ricky Ellis blocking. Now watch what Nate Allen now. They think that he hit Nate Miller. Now what? Does he push off with his hands? Yes, indeed he do. That is offensive pass interference. And he drops the ball. And the official's standing there. Don't get mad about it. I'm not. I'm not. 
Second down and 10. 14 to 7, the express lead. A rainy, cold night at Mile High Stadium with an enthusiastic crowd. Out of the shotgun. Quick handoff. Kevin Nelson not going to get much, if anything. Bill Matthews, number 51, the first to hit him. It'll be third down and nine to go. You know, when you and I saw this rain that started about 4 o'clock this afternoon, I thought, are we going to have a terrible game? They're going to keep the ball on the ground, kind of run up and down the field. <laughs> this has been a tremendous football game. The only thing is, you really can't get a handle on what's happening out there because the ball is bouncing funny ways, and there's no rhythm. I know they're trying to follow their game plan, but the ball is just up for grabs. There have been fumbles, two fumbles on one play, interceptions, interceptions for scores, 73-yard pass play. It has been something. That is four who is in motion. Young sees an opening. Is it enough? No. Oh, don't go down. Oh, he did not go down, but he is not hurt. But he'll learn next time. It's going to be fourth down and about three to go. Matthews put him down along with Hemphill, the fifth defensive back. And now, Partridge will kick the ball away. All right, Steve, let me tell you something, my friend. I, again, I love your guts, and you move up. you got 10 yards to go. Matthews is going to hit him, Hemphill's going to hit him, and also number 21, David Dumars. Here it comes. There's Hemphill, oh. Matthews, and Dumars. When there's three, the black shirts hit the mud. Archery is standing on his own 23. He's going to have to kick off the butt if he takes a step. Lock is running and they're letting it run down. Kicks off him a good kick, a good kick. Martin back at the 22. Coming this way. Look out. Martin has a clear field. Martin is the only man down the sideline, but he'll be going back and he's up from behind. He is going to go all is the first punt return or kickoff return this year for a touchdown. And David Martin gets a tremendous block from number 47, Tremble. Steve Tremble got the block that really sprung him for the long run. If there was another block downfield, that's everybody hustling, but the initial block came right after he took the ball and went back to his left. Well, if they tie it up, the express points came in the first quarter. All the Denver points thus far have come in the second on a 73-yard play by Kevin Williams with a pass and a 79-yard play by David Martin with a punt. And now, Spielman will try to tie this wild one up. <laughs> and it is. Could have be gotten away, and it is 14 to 13. Low pass from center bobbled. Gagliano could not hold on to it. Tyrone Justin ends up blocking it. Well, one of the record books for this year at least. Here it comes, Jim. The ball just never gets down, and Tyrone Justin comes into the outside. It blocks the, blocks the ball. We just take a look at it. We're going to see tre tremble on it. Maybe we can see it on this thing. Tremble gets a tremendous block back on the other side. You see the man on, on the ground, and then from here on out, it's David Martin. He's going to get a man downfield in front of him. He can't see. And the only man that has a shot at him is Patrick, the, the punter. You can forget that, Jack. You've been a punter. You know. That's right. 14-13. Here it comes. There was a block. This is the right of the screen by Tremble that set this whole thing up. David Martin down. And I'll tell you something. Partridge just sick to his stomach right about there. And now he knows he's got to go back over and try to catch Martin. Forget that. Now Gray, Tony Bodie go deep. As we come back live now, Martin still being congratulated on the sideline. 14-13 game. John Hadle, the big play. Talk about the big play. John, 73 yards per score, 79 yards per score after you led them 14 to nothing. And all John's saying, we're still ahead by a point. And when you see the 73 and the 79, we got to go back to a statistic that you gave them a couple of times. 32 rookies on this ball club, and the big play is hurt the rookie team. And the goal of showing poise, and we got better than a half to go. 
is Gray in the end zone, and he's going to bring it out. He brought it back to 40 yards the last time, but that's well played there, and this time he's got no shot. He fumbled the ball. Now the question is, it is it his is. ball. Getting up. Hey, we got it. Here's our Tatum. The man who gets it is number 55, Harper. One of the linebackers on the special teams, they say he's tremendous. But the hit was made by number 62, I believe, Peyton. No relation to our director. Here comes Gray out. Now, is it Peyton, number 62, that makes the hit? We'll see in a second. Here comes Peyton back. Nope, no, it isn't Peyton. I don't know what he was. He's just happy they got the ball back. Now, he went for it. He almost had it. And as you can see, that it was Hopper that did get it. And it looked like it's Bill Johnson who made the hit coming across. First down the inside the 20, down by one. Here come the goal, Vincent White. Pass the line of scrimmage, and White will be run out of bounds as he gets to about the 15, 14 yard line. Run out of bounds by Wyman Henderson. Last seven times that either team has had this ball, combined Paul, no one's been able to hang on the ball for more than three minutes. They've had it a couple of minutes. They've fumbled it away, scored with it, or kicked it away. Not only is the ball wet, Jim, but you have to understand something. So are the uniforms wet. And when you're carrying that ball next to your body, somebody puts a helmet in their strips and arm, the ball's going to fly. Sidney and White, the setback. Ball inside the 15. That Sidney gets inside the 10-yard line. It'll be third and short. A ball game that has had a punt return for a score, an interception for a score, a 73-yard pass play for a score, two men, one from each side, disqualified, thrown out of the game for fighting. It's that kind of game. Well, Sidney is a power runner, but when you got Davis, Yarno, and Fiesel up in front, here comes Sidney. He's just following his center right up into the hole. You see the blocking. That's Tom Davis, number 52. He's getting a good block, and Sidney's just going to ride it. Now they've got third down and one. And we've got a timeout by the Denver goal. With 2.26 to go in the half. We've got a wild one at 14.13. Tampa Bay Bandits got well yesterday at the expense of winless Oakland. The Orton had a tough time with the Pittsburgh Maulers that won that ball game. They meet each other next Monday night down in the Superdome. And Paul and I will be there at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And now Bo Matthews, an outstanding blocker. Bob number one draft pick in the league comes in with Sydney. He could lead the way for Sydney on a play here, third down and short, a couple of yards. And that's what he's doing, leading the way for Sydney. And Sydney is very close to the first down. And Paul, I can't tell in the mud, but it looks as though he may have it. All he has to do is cross that, that, that uh, get to the six yard line, and he's got it. Well, the officials are not quite sure yet either. They are going to call for a measure. Let's take a look at Sid, Sidney now. He's got Vincent, excuse me, he's got Matthews, Bo Matthews out in front of him. There's a great block on the on the outside of the line of scrimmage by Nazolik, number 89. Go for it. A little short. I know Morton, they're going to go. Well, Spielman is walking back and forth, but Morton is a quarterback, and quarterbacks don't like to trot off or hold the ball for a field goal. And the offensive quarter coordinator, Vito Babe Pirelli, is also a quarterback, and they, look at Hato. John, there's another quarterback. Of course, the LA Express has Don Plossman, who was another quarterback, and then you got Sid Gilman, who coached all the great quarterbacks. Fourth down, and inches to go. They're going to just go down to the two-minute gym and, and they go back and talk it over. Ten Rose is already coming over to talk it over. It has been a wild and woolly and wet first half. With the Express breaking out to a 14 to nothing lead, still leading by a point, it is 14-13 as we hit the two-minute mark. But when we come back, the goal are going to try to change it and go out on top. Matthews and Sidney to step back. Matthews, Matthews, first down. Stop to the five, first and goal to go. Jim, it's not a surprise that the Denver goal would go for it. And you said it before the play. But the thing about it is, Craig Morton has told everybody and he believes it. Now, Bo Mass is going to get the ball and break to the outside and pick up the first down. And this is power running. It's blocked by, by Sidney up in the middle. 
He's going to slip to the outside. Hicks, number 87, gets a good block. But more than philosophy, it's, it's the game. And let's have fun with the game. At the moment, they're having a lot of fun with the game. First and goal to go. And now Penrose looking to the end zone. The end zone, he's got his man, Vincent White, touchdown. And Denver leads for the first time. It's all set up by the fumble on the return by Gray and the recovery by Jeff Hopper. Well, Vincent White's out to the outside. John Hayden is not happy at all. They also had Justin out there, but the man that was covering was Howard Carson, the linebacker, on the fullback, Vincent White. Denver is calling a timeout here. They may want to go for two here, which I think they're going to do. They never have before. Well, they, they, I remember they, they missed, missed an extra point, but it's a chance. Here it comes out. The play-action pass. And he's going to hit Vincent White on the outside. Again, Howard Carson, number 54, the linebacker, is trying to stay with him. And also, number 34, Aaron Mitchell was out there. 17-yard drive set up by the fumble recovery. Now, just look what has happened to this young Los Angeles Express team. A punt return for 79 yards. They get the ball back. They fumble the ball, and this happens. And out in front now go the gold with them going for two points with a minute and 31 to go. Jim, don't you like it? Vincent White, instead of busting the ball in the mud in the end zone, he took it back into the grass where he can put it on the grass and not get any mud on the ball. <laughs> Here's Penrose. Neither team has tried for a two-point conversion yet this year. This is Denver's first. They're already up by the score of 19 to 14. They're trying to make it 21 to 14. Expecting play action pass, maybe. And the linebackers. Penrose is bounced down, and nobody's going to get it. So the score remains 19 to 14. They really came up to Penrose. David Howard, they had everybody coming. They're going to sacrifice the pass. What you look at David Howard, nobody touches him. Penrose, you've got to understand, you don't have that much time down there. You also see in the backfield with Aaron Mitchell, number 34, so they sent safeties and everyone back in there. But David Howard, number 58, gets there, and that's all gone. That was Tom Davis going after the ball, number 52, the center. John Adel on this cold, wet night in Denver, Colorado. And surprisingly, Paul, looking around and listening to the crowd, there might be a much bigger crowd than what we're able to see, with many of them tucked up under cover having moved back in the seat. I can't believe that anybody's here, period. Except us. <laughs> Bodie and Gray, who fumbled the ball, go back deep again, and Spielman will take it off again. There's the crowd, and you can see the more people there under the overhang. Gray on your right, Bodie on your left, and Spielman to kick off. And this is Bodie that takes this one. Bodie's across the 20, and Bodie is going to get... Oh, he the football again! Can you believe that? It's still loose and recovered by Denver! Johnson! Bill Johnson gets up saying it's all mine! Jim, Tony Bodie fumbles this ball, but I can tell you right now that John Hano said, look, let's be careful with the football right away. He gets a couple of pops in there. Johnson is going to eventually end up with a ball. The man who put the final hit was Hood, number 54, the linebacker. Johnson gets the ball. But all Hano really wanted to do, Jim, with a minute and 21 seconds, let's control the ball because we get it in the second half. Can you believe that Harper recovers the fumble to set up a score to go ahead? Harper causes the fumble that Johnson gets to give him another chance at the 10-yard line. And don't be surprised to see Denver throw right here on first down. They're in the eye formation. Denver's got the ball the last three times after fumble. Daly, the man in motion. Vincent White with the ball. White, run down. Rock continues to run. It's down to the 110 mark. But three times in a row... Denver's gotten the ball as a result of a fumble by the Express as White limps off. And Hadel just gritting his teeth. 
He's still in the ball game. 1914. White is trying to run off his injury, but I think they're going to bring in Bill White, uh, Bill Johnson, because that's what they're going to do as White and himself. Daly wide to the right. Johnson, the setback with Sidney. Ball is at the five-yard line. Second down. anything behind right there he gets a block but downfield there's no number 80 he knocks down 58 David Howard and when he does that he wipes out two other players and Johnson walks home when was the last time that the Express had the football except to return a kickoff last Sunday <laughs> they have really not been in the ball game since midway in the second half offensively Young just hadn't had the football Jim, people have to remember something about the L.A. Express, and we're not making excuses for them. Remember, there are 32 rookies on this football team. In the first quarter, they were up 14-0. We saw signs of excellence to this football team. It's like what John Hedl said to me. It's like coaching an all-star team. They've got so many different players. And since the first game of the year, they have activated 19 more rookies. That brings it up to 32, but they've had 19 additional rookies since the first game. So he has his problem. All they have to do is put it together. Bill Johnson, the last in to get the score. I guess he figured that Vince White might come back in. There's a lob. Oh, that's so good. That was intended for Leonard Harris. And Harris is down in the water in the mud saying, no good. Well, they never tried for two before tonight. They still haven't done it. It's 25-14. And with 30 seconds to go, here comes a third kickoff and a third return, perhaps, by the Express. John, I, hey, like, here comes the replay. And that's the young man that got the block, Leonard Harris. He was there. He just couldn't hang on to the ball. Tyrone Justin, number 20, was covering him all the way. But Penrose just takes one step back and pops the ball up in the air. You see Justin out there. There's Harris. When he hits the ground, the ball comes out. If I was John Hale, I'd tell the kickoff team, if it's close to the end zone, let it go out of the end zone. We, we're, we have 30 seconds. We do have three timeouts. It doesn't make any difference. There's the scoring summary. Nelson carried it in from two yards out. They were dominating. They moved the ball 79 yards on that drive. And then White Rain intercepted a Penrose pass and returned it for a touchdown. 14, and then they got going. Williams, a 73-yard pass. He ran away from everybody. 14 to 7. Then Martin, the first punt or kickoff return of the year for a score. And a 14-13. And you've seen the fumble. White taking the pass from Penrose after one fumble, and just recently Johnson taking it in on a six-yard run after another fumble. And it's 25-14. Wild, wild ball game. On a rainy, cold night in Mile High Stadium. Spielman to kick it off again, and Bodie and Gray again are deep, standing at their own five. And they'll have to run this ball back. This is Gray at the three. Let's see if he holds on to that football. He does. Gets out across the 20-yard line. But with 24 seconds to go, Steve Young brings his troops back on the field for the first time. Not in great field position. And let's see how Hadel plays it, Paul. Let's not make any more mistakes with 24 seconds to go. Let's just get the heck out of here and regroup and come back. 
Exactly. You know, you've got a young quarterback. There's no sense in taking a chance down here in, uh, around the 24, 23 point, 24 yard line, even though you have three timeouts because you are getting the ball back in the second half. The 25 points is the most points in a quarter or a half that Denver has ever scored in its lifetime. All set up by those fumbles and big plays. They're going to go from the shotgun. They're throwing. Look at this. Oh, he's going to throw the ball. And has his man coming out of the backfield. That is Ricky Ellis. Number 88. Take a timeout. They've got three. Well, they could going to stop within the last two minutes, Paul. Doesn't make you got to move the uh, sticks. Well, they're going to take a timeout anyway. <laughs> this surprises me. You know, I'm saying you don't want to make a mistake here. Now there's only 17 seconds, and it is a sloppy night. It is still raining here. It's been raining since 4 o'clock this afternoon, and that was a big surprise to me. But John Hadel figured, what have I got to lose? Well, he's on a 37-yard line now, moving into good territory. Put it downfield. Let's see what Young can do. The ball is slippery, the field is slick, and the old saying that the receivers know where they're going, and the defenders have to try to keep up with them, and they're the ones more likely to slip. Hey, I know he has been shell-shocked by the big turnovers tonight. I'm going to tell you right now, Froggy, I'm not going to ever try to outguess him again. <laughs> that Tobin Road gave John Hadle that name. We were playing with the Los Angeles Chargers, San Diego Chargers. He used to call him Froggy. And it stuck with him all these years. Anthony Allen comes wide to the right. Townsell, who has had one ball thrown his direction to the right, and Malcolm Moore go to the left. Young, as time, delivers it underneath. is a man who came out of the whole pile but that's the second fumble by Gray but this one is in Denver territory and a gold man is hurt. Jim you know why these fumbles are coming first of all because of the rain the ball is slick but what Mel Gray is trying to do is get extra yardage. Now watch it. Here he comes out. He's hit. He gets another shot there. The ball is bouncing around and I'm like a man. With the 72 Johnson that comes up with the fumble again. That's his second. Yes, it is. His second recovery of a fumble because when Tremble fumbled, he got it before. So that's his second recovery. But it's the guy's trying to get the extra yardage. The arms are swinging out wide and somebody pops that arm. You've got to keep the ball tucked in on a wet day, on any kind of day. Linebacker Bill Matthews shake it up. For Denver, they've already lost Greg Gherkin last week, arthroscopic surgery. He was the second leading tackler in that five and a half sacks. From the 49, Penrose, but time for maybe one play. And the ball is caught over there by Harris with his foot nearly out of bounds. One second to go. Look at the rain pouring down. And I think the Express might be believing that more than rain is pouring on their parade tonight. A 14 to nothing lead. Now they lead 25 to 14. And trying to get out of this half, they're going to kick a field goal. They're going to try. <laughs> Galliano, now let's back up quarterback is the holder, and he's from the old Kansas City Chiefs. And this ball would be 56, 56 yards. They've got nobody playing center field should it be a fake. It is not a fake. From 56 yards out, no way. it is not going to get anywhere near there. With that wet, wet ball, time is out. First quarter belonged to the Express. The second quarter and a half belongs to the Denver Gold, leading the Pacific Division. Humble turned the ball over. Now let's go back to Mile High Stadium in Denver. Our Jim Simpson standing by with a special guest, Don Klosterman, the president and general manager of the Los Angeles Express. Gentlemen. Thank you, Tom. I could spend all evening long, one of the second half, talking about what Don Klosterman has done in football. I'll simply say, Don, you are currently president and general manager. First quarter, your team looked good, took it to the goal. Second quarter, they looked very young. Well, they sure did. I, have, I don't recall ever being with a team where we fumbled two consecutive kickoffs, which resulted in scores, and then to fumble on another one. But anyway, we are young. I think they're playing hard, and that's the most important thing. And I think that uh, the second half is going to be a real test as to uh, the character build, to give them experience of coming from behind. But Don, you're going against the Rams, you're going against the Super Bowl champion Raiders, you're going against the Dodgers, you're going against the Lakers, you're going against you, I could go on and on. And it's an uphill battle for the Express. It is. And that's why we're fortunate, all of us have Bill Oldenburg as our, 
as our owner because he's so supportive of all of us. And it's a tough market, but we're going to make it. Well, I know that you're looking forward to how they play in the second half. So are we, but now let's go back to Paul McGuire. All right, Jim, let's just take a look at the first half possessions. L.A., they, they get the ball, and you, as you said in the interview, take a look what they did the first couple of times. They got a touchdown. Now they got an interception in there somewhere for a touchdown. And then it was punt, punt, fumble, punt, fumble. And they keep turning the ball over. Now Denver, on the other hand, at the beginning, they started out slow. It looked like L.A. was going to blow them away, 14-0. Punt, interception for a touchdown, punt, and then the range came. A TD and another punt. They get back in the ball game. Then they get the interception, another touchdown, a touchdown, and a field goal. So they've done well. They open the kickoff. This has been a dangerous thing, but this kickoff's going to go out of bounds. A dangerous thing, a kickoff by Denver. The Express have turned two of them into ultimate Denver scores by their fumbles. But now Spielman will walk back to the 30-yard line and will kick off again. All right, Jim, here's one of your, here's one of your pet peeves, James. There's four seconds to roll off this clock. Now, I thought the clock did not start, start until someone touches, touches the ball. It, there's 14 minutes and 56 seconds on the clock, and this happened to you in the game. Oh, in any event, four seconds have gone. There you can see, and now you can also see the range here. And quarterback comparisons, Young is 6 for 9 for 106 yards. Penrose, 8 for 12, 130 yards. And a couple of touchdowns and a couple of interceptions. Penrose has thrown for two touchdowns, and one of his interceptions is the return for a touchdown. Well, in a way, you kind of hope the second half is as wild as the first half, because that was something to see. Bodie at the five-yard line. Turns the corner, and down he goes after he crosses the 30-yard line, where Steve Young... Ricky Ellis, Mel Gray will come out on the field. When Ellis is not there, it is Tony Bodie. Wide receivers Townsell and Allen, neither one has caught a ball. Mike Sherrod, the tight end, no one's even thrown a ball in his direction. Zimmerman, Kraut, Luther, Durrett, and Hart are your offensive line, remembering that right left guard, Wayne Jones, was tossed out of the ball game for fighting with David Stalls, a defensive tackle of the goal, who was also tossed out for fighting. That's the kind of first half it was. Young. Young with all the time in the world. Well, the ball is dropped. That is number 86, Mike Sherrod. We said that they had not thrown to the tight end all night long, and they threw to him on the first play, but he dropped it. Maybe that's why they haven't thrown to him. Second down. Then I hit the man in the chest, and he drops the ball, which is Sherrod. Dalzell and Allen wide to the right. Percy to the left. The ball is thrown out into Kevin Nelson. Good move there by Nelson. Another good move by Nelson. Nelson got the first down. Nelson down the sideline. He's made another great move. And Marcus Patty catch him. He makes another move. Touchdown. The Express come back. This Kevin Nelson, what a great one. This was a screen pass by Young. Now, remember, they can go for two and get this game within three. But they're not. They're going to kick the extra point. That is Isaiah coming in. Hartridge to hold. Oh, it's just a wild one. And it is 25 to 21 with 13.59 to go to third quarter. Screen pass all the way. Now watch Kevin Nelson. The question is, does he step out of bounds? Number 23, Nate Miller misses him. Hemp Hill misses him. Here's, here's the question. Here's a look at the sideline. Watch his foot when he is bumped right here. Did he 
step out of bounds? I don't think so. I don't think he did. I don't either. The only man who really had a chance at him was yeah. David Martin trying to close on him. But watch the movie makes back into the inside, away from David Martin. And that's a touch of great run. Don Foster was there, the mark of the team. Well, if they come out and play hard in the second half, after being split for the second quarter, they've come out, in a minute and one second, have drawn within four points. John Hadle's team has come back. They've never scored more than 14 points all year. Now they've got 21 and trail by four. As Andreas will kick off. Ball bounces up high. Very quickly, Kevin Williams, with all that speed, he's a nine free spinner, comes back, gets across the 20-yard line. Jack made across the way by Darrell Patillo, number 46, the defensive back, along with Troy West. 69 yards, it only took one play, two plays on the drive, one minute and one second, and the express are back in. Now in the first half, and in fact, throughout, throughout the first half, Paul, express played rather good defense. It's the fumbles that did them in. Exactly, when you turn the ball over each twice inside your own 20-yard line, you expect the other team to score. Denver is without a doubt. They are the better football team on paper, but defensively, you're right. They express that they're playing good football. That's Johnson, who's been carrying well tonight. He's already carried more times tonight than he had all year long. By the way, Vincent White, who limped off, is not seriously injured and is scheduled to return, but I would imagine Bill Johnson, who scored from six yards out on the run, and has run well tonight, is hoping that he won't return, that they'll give him a chance to show what he can do. Well, Bill Johnson is a pretty good-sized football player. He's 6'1", 220 pounds out of Eric, Arkansas State. He is, however, a rookie, but this is a good way to get your baptism. Second down and five. Arnold comes wide to the left. Harris to the right. Cold, wet, rainy night not able to get out of the backfield at all is Bill Johnson, ridden down there by number 75, Georgia Chica. And it's third down. The LA Express, that time they had the blitz again, but they had the linebackers come, two linebackers, and every time that they're in a blitzing situation, and it usually has been coming on second down, they've been very, very effective with it. Now remember, at no time were they successful on a third down situation in the first half, despite the fact they lead. Five defensive backs. Third and six, Johnson carrying the football, looking for the first down, and it's going to get it! He is running well, and Johnson a little slow in getting up. That has been hurt across the way. Anderson and Mitchell put him down, and Johnson is just about to get up. Jim, this is a great individual effort, but watch Harry Sidney. Now, he's going to be blocking this time for Johnson. He's coming out. He knows he's got to block the linebacker. The linebacker is David Howard. It gives him enough room to get Johnson to the outside where he can pick up the first down. I don't know whether he did. It looked like he might have fallen on the football and knocked the wind out of him. I think he did. That's the same impression I got. He's getting up in any event. 11.56 to go. We have got a close one on this wet first down from a 33. The up man is Bo Matthews breaking into the secondary. First down for Matthews. The went to school at nearby University of Colorado. And is a 10-year pro. Across the 45-yard line, it's first down. Just a straight handoff right up the middle to center Tom Davis and George Arno, 66-52. They just get the blocks in the line of scrimmage. Also, Steve Rogers on the outside. Watch it. Here they go. There's a trap between the center. 52 Davis and 66 Yarno, and then Bo Matthews is an open area, picks up the first down. There he goes wide to the right, and Leonard Harris is near side left. And Matthews does not get for the yard or two at this moment. That was a good middle linebacker, Howard Carson, number 54, who initiated the tackle. That will be second down and long. Next Saturday evening, 5 o'clock Pacific time, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Los Angeles Express at home where they've never won all year, their own four, with Steve Young at quarterback against another rookie by the name of Walter Lewis out of Alabama who's having a great year for the Memphis Showboats. Second down, 8 to go from the 47-yard line. Daly wide right and Harris to the left. by 
four. Matthews is wrestled down by number 71, Forte. Making a start tonight. He's in on a couple of big plays. A rookie out of Bethune Cookman in a big one. 6'5", 270. Starting as we said because Eddie Meek Cleaver Weaver is out with a sprained ankle. Meek Cleaver. Cleaver, Eddie. Third and long. Third and seven to go. Matthews will come out. And Bill Johnson checks back in along with Sidney. Jim, they're down to five seconds on the clock. He took time out. They have to. The clock continues to run, but time has been called. 9.32 to go third quarter. All right, third down, seven from the 48. Three wide receivers, five defensive backs. Out of the shotgun, ten rolls. Puts it out here for Harris. Harris makes the catch. Out of bounds. It's fourth down. He must have been four or five feet out of bounds. Dave Stahl ejected from the game, remember, for his battle with the guard, Wayne Jones. The man you were looking at drinking pop was Dave Stahl. All right, here comes Harris going down. That's, that's Tyrone Justin knocking him out of bounds. He's supposed to get help from the safety. Now, the ball is laid out, but look at He's already out of bounds when he catches the ball. Didn't even get one foot in. So now to kick the ball away, Steve Gordon. Double safety back there, Townsell as well as Allen. Because the ball bounces funny ways in this rain, and that's going to have to be caught. And caught it is by Anthony Allen, and he's making a good return. Out across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. The Young and company get the ball. They move on a 69-yard play the last time. And that was a brilliant run by Nelson on a screen from Steve Young. And now the Express, who played so well in the first quarter and so poor in the second, are within four and have the football. Tampa Bay and New Orleans, 9 o'clock Eastern time next Monday night. New Orleans in a flat-out tie at the moment with Birmingham in their division. And Tampa Bay trying to stay in it in their division. They have rough times until yesterday. I should say Saturday when they have 58,000 people. Here's Steve Young back putting it up here. Is anybody looking? No! And there was a tender for Townsell, and Mark was the man that bumped into him, both going for the ball in second down. David Barton almost misjudged this ball. He's going for the ball. Jojo Townsell, if he, he, he would have been able to score, but take a look at it. Here's Barton, one-on-one. -on -one. They're playing man-man coverage. Here's David Martin going for the ball. Jojo Townsell out of the outstretched hands. Oh, you played a lot of football. You and I have watched a lot of football together. But really, this is one of the wildest football games I've ever seen. The first kick return all year for a touchdown. Interception for a touchdown. Long plays are better than 60 and 70 yards to score. Second down. Young throws. And there's a bump across the way. And the flag does go down. And Dennis for Sherrod, the tight end, and there was a bump put on him by David Dumar. And remember, it's not at the spot of the foul. It'll be a 15-yard step off in first down. But that's first down, Los Angeles. Illegal check. Where's he going to go? No call? flag on the play. The pass is not, not catchable. catchable. Ball is not catchable. So Tom Hale says, what? Wait, 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 it wait. just sank in. Wait, wait, now jump. Wait, whoa, wait, whoa. Whoa, Jack, whoa. Look, Ella's coming over. He was not the man who was thrown to it. Sherrod was thrown to All right, here's Young's throwing the ball out to Sherrod, and David Dumars, number 21, is out there with him. Now, you just judge for yourself. Is the ball catchable? The bump, there's no question about the bump being there. But look where the ball is. Out of bounds by four yards. There's just no way to catch it. That's an excellent call by the official. No, so instead of first down after 15 yard penalty, it is third down and 10. They've been highly successful on third down plays. Kevin Nelson almost caught in the backfield, makes another couple of good moves. It's going to be called anyway. It's fourth down. Hemphill ran him down. He'll have to kick the ball away. There's Dale Hemphill, the fifth back tonight. Under the, for this game, apparently only defense of the goal, four down linemen, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. 
Now Martin, who carried the ball for the league's only touchdown return on a punt of 79 yards, steps back to his 35. And kicking the ball away is Jeff Parkridge, who had to chase him toward the end zone last time. You can bet that offense of the LA Express, when they go down, they're going to break down and get themselves in a position to make a tackle, not let it happen again. Long count. Oh, beautiful kick. Beautiful kick. Martin takes it at the 35 and is out of bounds immediately. And they'll mark it at the 37-yard line. Sending Bailey to the right, Harris to the left, Bill Johnson, Harry Sidney to set back. Inside the 30-yard line, a big loss. Jim, I said that the LA Express are effective with the blitz. David Howard, 58, is blitzing from the outside. He's getting blocked there by Johnson, number 34. But just take a look at what, when it happens. It puts one-on-one -on, -one on everybody. There's no help for the offensive lineman. The ground is slick. And here's Gortz. He started punting when they got the ball on first down. If I was an offensive player, I might go over and smack him one. Kevin Williams with that 73-yard catch, wide left. to bring down, and he's got the first down. It was second down and 18 to go, and Johnson gets more than enough to close. Right train dragged him down, and Johnson gets up limping a little. Jim, I've talked week after week about players. Watch, watch Bill Johnson's legs. Now, the blitz was on in the middle. Bill Johnson is going to break to the outside. First of all, the stiff arm is coming here. That's you. Goodbye. Now, that's Aaron Mitchell. Forget him. Watch his legs. When he, in his legs, he picks up an additional eight yards after two men hit him, and Tyrone Justin is one, one of them. Watch it. Sidney gets a great block on David Howard. Now when he gets to the outside, he's just moving his legs. Excuse me. Johnson scored a touchdown and averaged about seven yards. Across the middle, the ball is missed by Arnold, and then a couple of men had a chance to intercept. Mitchell and Henderson, neither one got it. It is second down and ten. Johnson, as we said, averaging about seven yards per carry and also has a score. He had carried the ball before tonight just twice. There's Arnold who dropped that ball, and there's Gagliano. Remember, Penrose took a hit, but he is still out on the field. Twenty-five, twenty-one, Denver, 7.42 to go, third quarter ball at midfield. Second and ten. is on, Drain is there, and Sidney steps right around him. Drain cut to the inside, Sidney took the pitch, went to the outside, and ultimately picked up two yards in that is all. Mitchell and Turner put him down. Second down and eight. Jim, any other play, Dwight Drain's going to stuff it, but they ran a short pitch. Excuse me, I said second eight, it is third and eight. Johnson got up limping a little bit. He's got to feel good about his work tonight. Youngsters fall set out of Arkansas State. I can't believe that even Denver, they have not thrown to their tight end to Zoli. Penrose puts it out, and the ball is thrown across the way by Arnold. Another first down. Inside the 30-yard line. They'll mark it at the 30 or the 27. Arnold told Penrose, I dropped one, but I won't drop another one. But Penrose puts this ball behind Aaron Mitchell in front of Wayman Henderson. Watch the shot. Right there, it's perfect. Or, excuse me, behind Henderson in front of Mitchell. Penrose now 9 for 15 for two touchdowns, 152 yards, and two interceptions. One of those returned for a touchdown by White Drain. Bailey wide to the right. Harris left. Again, the goal leading by four. Bo Matthews, good play made there by the linebacker David Howard. Came around from the right linebacker spot from behind, wrestled him down after, well, for no gain. Let's call it second and nine. Jim, now the LA Express are blitzing on first down and second down. They're sending safety blitz. And here comes David Howard, 58, down the side. Now remember, each time he's blitzing, Harry Sidney never gets to him to block him. And when that happens, Howard's there to make the tackle. Playing in a quagmire, the rain continues to fall. 
as it has for the last five and a half hours. Penrose, lots of time. Dump to Pacific coming out on the backfield. Look at that little spin before it wrestled down. Near a first down and may have the first down. That's a, well, maybe about a half a yard shot. Did anybody check on Sidney to see if he took ballet classes? Take a look at the move, Harry Sidney. First of all, Penrose is looking to throw way downfield to the left, but he sees Harry Sidney getting out of the backfield. Watch the move he makes here. Down, the little knee dip, avoids two tacklers, and back up again. That's Kevin Turner to make the tackle. And here comes the change. And he's got the first down. First down, ball at the 16-yard line. That little dip he made, Jim, is the thing that got him the first down, Harry Sidney. 25-21, the only score of the second half has been a 69-yard screen pass by the Express from Young to Kevin Nelson, who did some outstanding running, but now the goals are coming back. Bailey and Nelson, your wide receiver. Matthews, an outstanding blocker, standing in front of Sidney, an outstanding runner. Here's Sidney, Matthews in front of him, Matthews with the crunching block, but they get Sidney from behind, and back to the block, the tackle made by Fletcher Jennings. Jenkins. Fletcher Jenkins got there because Harold Norfleet, number 70, did make his block. Harold Norfleet is the right tackle. Sidney's going to get the toss, but watch, you're going to see the man that makes the tackle is Fletcher Jenkins for the simple reason that you see number 70 in your screen. This is Harold Norfleet, did not block it. Put the ball back to the 20-yard line, second down and 14 to go. As Arnold, who just caught a pass, in this drive is wide to the right, Harris to the left. Penrose looking out here for Sidney. Sidney's got the ball at about the 15-yard line. It'll be third down and nine to go for the first down. Jim, even though it's only a five-yard pattern to Sidney, to Harry Sidney, the reason it's so important because now they're, they're at the 15-yard line. If they go for the field goal, they will be kicking it from the grass because now they have 10 yards of grass to work with, and we know that the field goal kicker, it only lines up seven yards deep. So that was important. They were on a 20, he would have been back in the mud. Now Elmer Bailey checks back in. Arnold comes out on third and long. Dealman standing by, maybe called on, unless they pick up the first down here. And here's the pitch to Sidney. Sidney is not going to get it. Down in the mud he goes at about the 11-yard line. Tackled across there by Aaron Mitchell, among others. And here comes Spielman and company out. For the second field goal attempt of the night, his first was of 56 yards, and of course that fell short. But he gets a great block, City does, from Bo Matthews. Watch number 41, the fullback. A crunch, goodbye to the outside. That was number 33, Dwight Drain. And then they've just popped Sidney. He's about, uh, what, four yards short? But they are in the grass. They're in the grass, and uh, let's see. The ball will be, looking from this angle, Paul, with the lines obliterated, about a 26-yard field goal attempt. Could be 27. We'll call it 26. Galliano's already dropped two snaps. From 26 yards out, it is perfect. It is 28 to 21. A touchdown difference between the two. 350 to go, third quarter. Watch what he does. He's a left-handed passer. He goes back to seven step plants. And he doesn't come through with his leg to throw the ball. It's mostly all arm motion. Now watch Penrose on the other side. When Penrose goes back to pass, watch his right leg come up into the ball. Now he's going to step up to throw. Uh, he, he was going to. And you see his leg moving. It looks like Young throws Jim just a little bit more flat-footed than Penrose does. That was the charge, as we said, after his first game. All had sold more than 30,000 tickets for this game. They had hoped to have better than 40,000 with a good walk-up. But with this weather that is cold, very cold, and very rainy, only 19,115 of the 30,000 who bought tickets showed up. at sensational. It really is. It's terrible weather. I tell you, it looks like it stopped raining. Let's hope. Spielman with Cody and Grady. Seven-point ball game. Gray, who fumbled twice on kick return, brings it back. 
the sidelines. He is still along the sidelines and bumped out of bounds by Steve Trimble, the former Maryland player number 47. And they'll mark it just inside the 35. Los Angeles, in this half, has punted the ball three times, fumbled twice, or I should say in the last six possessions, and has scored a touchdown. There's the scoring drive for that field goal. Young, as well as he is playing, on first down has tried four passes and has not hit on one of them. That's easy passes and they've been successful this time. He's got three wide receivers out there. And he's going to throw. And that ball's almost intercepted. A big play there by Calvin Turner. Almost took it and he's walking down the field like Good heavens, he's also inside the 20-yard line where he would have gone had he caught the ball. Well, now the, the play was going to be thrown out here to Nelson, a little loop pass to the outside, and the defensive end, Kelvin Turner, number 99, watches right off his fingertips. Here's the touchdown. He smells touchdown. But you got to catch the ball, son. Second down from the 34. 32 to go in this third quarter. Jojo Tomsell just hardly heard from the right. Wide to the right. Young, look out. A base one tackler. Fake. Well, I want to tell you something. Gerard was running all around and never did make a block. Never peeled back. Young was on his own and picked up about seven yards. Calvin Turner and Martin got him. But Terrell was just looking for somebody to block and never saw anybody. All right, let's just take a look at the blocking on the outside. There's Calvin Turner. He's being blocked by Gary Zimmerman, number 56. He's got excellent pass protection. But then it, he breaks out himself, and here he comes. Here's Calvin Turner. Take a look at here. Steve, get down, son. Please get down. David Martin, number 13, is also there. But when you got the big guy pounded down your back of your neck, you got to get down. Third down and two from the 42. Fourth down. They'll have to kick it away. Well, Paul, they published in the paper the other day here. Well, I'll talk about that later. Jim, we're gonna do we're gonna do Zimmerman again over Turner. Take a look at the block. Now Turner's going to the outside because he sees Young going there. Zimmerman's holding him and just riding him to the outside. Then Bungard's number 57, John. He reads the play all the way. Watch him drift back, read the quarterback's eyes, and almost gets himself an interception. David Martin, the man deep, to receive the punt of Parkford. That ball is going to roll out of bounds inside the 25. Now, when I start to say ball, they published the contract, apparently bona fide, of Steve Young the other day. And if people have not seen it, he was awarded, according to what the paper said, a two and a half million dollar signing uh, signing bonus, two and a half million to sign, a one and a half million dollar interest free loan. Then this year he's getting in salary two hundred thousand dollars, two eighty next year, three thirty, it goes on up. In the year two thousand ten to two thousand nineteen he'll get a million a year. In the year 2020, 2025, he'll get two million per year. In the out years 2026-2027, you get 3.1 million a year, which is a lot of money. But in a night to think what you're going to be doing in the year 2027, you're thinking about living a long time, and it's a long time. Bump the 23, 10 rows. Johnson carrying the ball across the 25 to about the 27. Third down and about seven to go. Saturday night, Don Henrik and I will be out in Los Angeles to watch the same express team. And Memphis under Pepper Rogers and led by Walter Lewis who is having an outstanding year throwing and running the ball as quarterback for Memphis. And you're talking about next week, next Monday night, we'll be in New Orleans. And every time I go to Birmingham, Alabama, I talk about ribs, don't I? <laughs> well, we're now going to New Orleans. Orleans. We're going to have some profit. Washington now treading Houston 24-7 to at the end of three quarters. Second down and seven. And Rose, Sydney, looking for the first down, does not get it. It'll be third down and short. Written down at the 32-yard line. He's got to get the ball across the 33-yard line. Peeling back to make 
make the tackle was number 99, James Robinson. All right, number 75 is Fiesel, Greg Fiesel, and he's blocking on 99, Robinson, and here comes Robinson. But you got to understand something. Now, Fiesel has already taken Robinson like five yards downfield. So that's a good block, but it's also a good reaction by the defensive man. Third and one. Tell you what, for 19,100 or whatever it is, this is a lot of 19,100. They're almost all be on this side. <laughs> 21 Denver, they're looking for a first down. Here comes Johnson, and he gets a tremendous hit by Aaron Mitchell, but it may not have been enough. Let us see where they spot the ball, meaning that Johnson may have picked up the first down despite the big hit by Mitchell. Mitchell getting up, and you can see he had a lot of help from Charles Ussery. The end on that side, and the Parkinson's crew is going to call for another re another uh, measurement. Jim, if he makes it, it's going to be by the nose of the ball. He's got it. He's got a nose of the ball. <laughs> I got the bad eyes to say that. All right, here comes Fiesel again. He's on Robinson. Now, they're going away from Fiesel, but look what he does to Robinson. He hits him, and then he gets his body, Jim, in front of Robinson so he cannot pursue. First down, the ball at the 34-yard line. That's the other game in the USFL tonight. Washington about to go down to 0-7 on the year. And Houston, and their Jack Pardee, who used to coach another team in Washington, doing rather well for an expansion team. Blitz is on. They pick it up. Penrose in trouble, gets the ball out here, and it is nearly caught by the end on that side. Victor Hicks, number 87, a former general. But he couldn't hang on. And it's second down and ten. That blitz was on, and Paul, what an outstanding job. They did a picking up the blitz of the Express to give Penrose that time. George Arnold, number 66, the left guard, pulled out and got David Howard, the blitzing linebacker, on the outside. If he didn't, Penrose would have been in next week. You know, I think you're right. I think the rain has stopped. And it did not turn to snow, as had been forecast. Not 33 over. seconds to go in the third quarter. Not over with yet. Here's Penrose putting it deep. And this is for Hicks again. One hand and does not get it. Well, they have not been throwing the tight ends much tonight. Hicks came in and they thrown to him twice on two plays. It's third and long, 10 yards. Penrose throwing a lot more tonight than what he's accustomed to throwing. They usually like to control the ball on the ground, but the young express team has done a rather good job of stopping them. And it is amazing, too, when you come into a game where a team last week threw the ball 13 times and completed 10 of them, I might add. They come into a game where it's rained through the whole entire first half, and they've thrown the ball four times, I think, in the first, well, they threw it 12 times in the first half, one half, one play less than they did last week in the whole game. Third down and 10 from the 34. That rolls from the shotgun, has the time, and has Arnold, and Arnold got the first down inside. Express territory at the 49. Aaron Mitchell put him down. Well, Paul, for those who may have joined us as this time is running out here in the third quarter, remember in the first half, Two fumbles led to touchdowns for Denver, and they returned a punt for a touchdown. But we've gone through three quarters of play. It is all over. It is still up for grabs. Denver leading the Pacific Division over Los Angeles. I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire. It's Monday Night Football, the USFL on ESPN. Denver leads by 28-21. They've got the ball at the 48 of the Express first down. Gordon told us that, you know, we have a team of power runner, and that they have. Vincent White, Harry Sidney, Bo Matthews, Johnson, Billy Johnson, and they run at you, and they're going to wear you down. They're just going to keep going the straight, straight ahead blocking, one-on-one, -on -one, and let those big backs get into the hole. He picks up six yards. First game of the year between these two was the first game of the year. It was 
at the end of three quarters, and then Denver got 17 in the fourth quarter. Now it's 28-21. Let's see how they do. The blitz is on. The pitch back to Harry Sidney. Sidney gets outside, breaking one tackle. Got the first down. Down near the 35-yard line. Mitchell came over, along with Butcher Jenkins to make the stop. And Howard Carson. All right, Steve Rogers, number 74, is the tackle. His job is to get to the outside and get on the linebacker, Kevin Turner. And he's, he's running him to the outside. You see Sidney, there's Bo Matthews also coming. But on this run, what Sidney does, he watch with him, watch him freeze drain, 33 right there. As soon as he throws him to the inside, <clears throat> then he cuts back, excuse me, to the outside. And there is the blocking by Bo Matthews and by Rogers. And Sidney picks up the first down. Haley to the right, Leonard Harris to the left. First down from the 37, there's Matthews running it outside. He gets outside to a goal. Another first down. Oh, Matthews down to the 22. Stopped by Carson and Mitchell, but not after Matthews did a lot of damage. And the goal, as Paul has explained, as Bort explained, for those big backs continue to grind it out. Steve Rogers again. Take a look at him. He's blocking and he's also holding on Lee Williams. But he pulls Lee Williams to the ground. They don't call anything on it. And then they get up and pick up another first down. You're allowed a little bit of holding as long as you don't get caught, James. That's the secret to it. In the third quarter, through the third quarter, Denver has now taken over the time of possession by 12 minutes. And they got a good one going here. Matthews. Oh, look at him run. Look at him run blocking in front of him and near another first down inside the 15 yard line. Bo Matthews left, Bo Matthews right, one first down and nearly another. Jim is just wearing down that young defensive line and the linebackers, the experienced offensive line of the Denver Gold. And it, it, it's that time again in the game. Did you say the last time was 10-10 going into the fourth period? They got 17 in the fourth. Well, Georgia Chica is exhausted. One thing I think you, you said it, about this LA Express defense, they show you what they can do. Johnson and Sidney, the setback. Here comes the blitz, and there goes Johnson. Johnson, maybe a yard or two that time, and that's all. And you can see that Kevin Turner, number 50, is one of the men who makes the stop. John Hadle's young team. It has only won two ball games all year. Never won at home. Won their two ball games on the road at Oakland and at San Antonio. And they'll be home next Saturday against Memphis. Another this, measurement. This Denver team, while they measure Paul, goes on next Sunday to play at Pittsburgh, which gave New Orleans all it wanted. And then the next Sunday they got to stay on the road and play at New Orleans. And then they come home and get Birmingham. So the goals are entering quite a period in a very short distance here the first down and here comes Bo Matthews again back onto the field. The one thing that Craig Morton told us Jim on Saturday was if the Arizona Wranglers lose on Sunday which they did do to Philadelphia and we win this game on Monday night it is so important to us because it puts us three games ahead in our division and this is the most important thing to him. Denver would be six and one Arizona would be three and five three and four Los Angeles two and five and Oakland oh and seven. And that means playoff territory to keep that up. Second and inches. And there's Sidney, way outside. He's got plenty. Inside the 10. Wrestled down. First down and goal to go. The goal. Tackle made by Henderson. Jim, they're just caving everything into the inside when they want to get Sidney to the outside. But just as soon as Sidney sees it, this play is designed to go off tackle. He's got Bo Matthews in front of him. And take a look at it. Hicks is blocking down. See, there's nobody to the outside. The force is not there until after. And that's Wayman Henderson, number 22, that comes in. He's a cornerback. And at, that's after Sidney has the first down. All the gold have got going what they want going. 27 plays in this half. 19 so far running the football, which is, that's the balance they want running the pass. Their game. First and goal to go from the seven-yard line. And here's Bo Matthews. Bo Matthews. Go down to about the two. Where does second and goal to go? And Denver, you can just see the line, as we've been saying on this drive, wearing down a tired express team. Bo Matthews, Harry Sidney's out front of him. Of course, Steve Rogers, he gets a great block, and so does the Zolik on the outside. 
but look, they're trying to force him down. That's David Howard, 58. Even though he's hit, he still lunges for three. And this drive started way back on the 24, and they just controlled it. Running in this quarter alone on this drive, five minutes off, and it started in the last quarter. From the two-yard line, down two flags go down one delayed one very quickly both from the end zone well Parkinson will sort it out delay of game against the express maybe because they moved across and hit someone and got back I'm, I guess that's the signal for delay of game and we'll have to see what caused that delay of game going to get a, a foot or half the yard. It's almost a whole yard. 12 men on the field. 12 men on the field. That Take delays the game. But if you can't stop them with 11, why not go with 12? John Hadel shaking his head. Got to be proud of his team tonight, although they're being worn down now. What they look for, Jim, we'll get into it after this play, what, what the L.A. Express coaching staff will look at after this game. Touchdown ball may not have a chance because there goes Paul Matthews. Another flag down as Matthews goes down. Henderson makes the good play, but a flag went down immediately. Going on this side of the field by the line judge, Lawrence Hill. Offside, LA Express, so they'll, they'll move it another half a yard. Jim, what I was going to say, what John Hader will do in the coaching staff, they take a team like this with 32 rookies. Here it comes. 57, lined up in the neutral zone, second down. Number what? You got me. He said 67. That's they don't what, happen to have there, one, there but is that's no okay. 67. Well, he snuck in from the stand. Okay. Let me just say this. What they do is they take a look at all the positive things that happen in this football game, and that's the thing that they stress more so than anything else. They're not going to sit there and yell at 32 rookies on a football team. Still second down, but now about a couple of feet to go only. It is Sydney, and Sydney got the touchdown. Sydney scores his third touchdown of the year. He goes over George Arnold, 66, Steve Rogers, 74, and Tom Davis to center. Here they come. There's the blocking in the line. Remember, it's only a half yard. He cuts it back. Kevin Turner, number 50, tries to stop it, but Sidney's already in. Here it comes again. They're, they're getting off the ball very well. Harry Sidney goes right up over the center. There's the touchdown. 13 plays, 77 yards. And they ate a lot of time off that clock. They've eaten, let's see, five minutes and... 33 seconds in this quarter alone and a total of 7 minutes and 54 seconds. Spielman to add the extra point. Impressive drive of nearly 8 minutes. Spielman adds the extra point. And it is 35 21, 9 and a half minutes. 9.37 to go. Sydney saying hi there. Cody and Gray are deep. Spielman will kick off. And the problem that Paul McGuire and I have, we got to pick an M Menon MVP and give $1,000 to the college or university of his choice. So many things have happened erratically tonight, unexpectedly tonight, that uh, we got to think about this. I was thinking, along with you, that maybe it's David Stahl because he got kicked out of the game and he fired up the defense. Well, what about Wayne Jones who got kicked out? Well, if they come back and win, he'll be considered. All bounces by Bodie. Tony Bodie across the 20 to the 23. Also consider while we're kicking this around here, Paul, and there are others in uh, conjunction. That is David Martin, who became the first man this year to return a kick of any kind for a touchdown. He went 79 yards and put him touchdown to touchdown, tied the ball game up. Actually, did because they missed the extra point. 77 yard drive that last one, 13 places he said, for Sydney going over to run out. Now, the Express have had the ball the last six times. Big play in this half. Young 
looking to run. Now throws and throws behind his man, number 86. Makes that 88, beg your pardon, Ellis. No, that is 86. That's Mike Sherrod. Jim, let me explain something. What John Hato and the, and the offensive coaching staff did with this game for Steve Young. In the first six games of the year, they had a lot of motion. They used a, a back, which was a halfback. Ricky Ellis was actually receiver in the backfield with only one back back there, either Mel Gray or Nelson. What they did in this game was eliminate all the motion and make it and simplify it for Steve Young. And I'm going to get to the end of this right after this play. Young has missed his last five passes that he's thrown. Second down and ten. And that was knocked down for his goal for his last six. And a third down and ten. Don't come and that's Jeff Harper that got his hands up again. Harper very instrumental in two fumbles, recovering one toward the end of the first half and setting up another. Let's see if it was 55 Harper. I don't know if it was Harper or, or Thornton, number 60, that, that blocked it. But look at Turner on the outside. He's putting the heat on. He's getting blocked by Gary Zimmerman and also getting help on the inside by number 69, Crouch. I'll get back. I still want to finish this thing about Steve Young and what's happened. Okay, third and ten. less than two minutes and they go off the field again and that means that Todd Express defense has got to come on again. Hartridge the punt. I'm not sure was it Newton or Hood number 54. It might have been Hood. I thought I saw 53. We're going to see right here coming from the right side. No. Yeah it was right. That's right. It was Newton. So let me, what I was going to say about Steve Young, Jim, just before the play, they've only been averaging 10 points a game. They do have 21 points on the board. That's a good sign. Here's Partridge. A good sign for Denver is they're going to lead this Pacific Division by three games after the ride, unless the Express turn their young act around in a hurry. Denver's just taking over the ball game here in the fourth quarter. Line drive, chance for Martin at the 45-yard line. He looks for daylight. Martin, oh, he lost the football. And it'll belong to the Express. Partridge, the punter, gets it back at the 21. So Martin returned for 79 yards to the score. Gives this one up and back to the Express. Again, we're looking at trying to get extra yardage. This came from behind. You're not tucking the ball away. Once you get into the open, you've got to be expecting. You're dancing. You've got to expect to get hit from the behind. Watch David Martin. The blocks are beautiful. He breaks the hole. But watch where the ball is now. It's going to be out to the outside. He's just hit by number 22. Henderson. And Wayman Henderson. And knocks the ball away. In part, hey, look at this. I just got it right back again. Now Young will try again. He's missed his last six in a row. Young throws. Should. Nope. Bouncing in front of Anthony Allen. With good coverage there. By Nate Miller. And it's seven in a row that Steve has missed. At one time last week, he completed seven in a row on a drive for a touchdown, connecting with Jojo Tanzel. He's not connected with him tonight. Matter of fact, Tanzel will go down if Young proves out to be the quarterback most people think he will be as the first man to catch a pass. Thrown by Young in professional football. Second down and ten. Goes another one under pressure. 0 for 8. Young. Thompson, or rather Thornton, was really pressing him, but he bounced that one also to Kevin Nelson. Young man is just saying, stay with me, guys. I'll put this thing together sometime. It's going to take some time. And I really feel sorry for him. First of all, the amount of money he's making, I don't feel sorry about that. I mean, he, he, he deserves it because he got it. But there's a lot of pressure on the young man. And again, I'm going to repeat it. When you're playing with a team with 32 rookies on it, it's added pressure. He's got to carry a heavy load. Seven for 19. He's missed his last eight in a row. Before that, he was seven for 11. Now he's on his pass block even before the ball is snapped. Well, the man that caused it is, is Bruce Thornton. Again, number 60. He made a move towards the offensive line, and as soon as they saw that, Jeff Hart... On the offense. Jeff Hart, the offensive right tackle, just pulled back. So did Mike Durant, number 60, the right guard. Then 
Denver looking to win its sixth ball game and its fourth ball game in a row after having been shut out by Michigan 28 to nothing. And we all know what happened to Michigan over the weekend. By the way, Ken Lacey of Michigan, did you hear that? Good running back. Apparently assigned with the Kansas City Chiefs, so turn about a fair play. A USFL star is now going to the NFL. I didn't think the NFL was going to invade him. Did you? Three wide receivers out on third down. Trying to get away is Young to run for the first down, and he's not going to get it. Knocked down at the 25-yard line by Bungard, the linebacker, and they'll have to kick the ball back to David Martin and the Denver goal. With 7.35 to go, with Denver leading by 14, and Partridge back on the field. And I think when Dave Stalls got thrown out of the football game, Bruce Thornton, number 60, got his opportunity to play. And when he did that, man, he's coming on. You saw the score, 31-13. Kelly, we were concerned about him. He left the game hurt back in the first half. He's back. Just threw 23 yards to Corbell for a touchdown, and Houston is running away from winless Washington. Leonard Harris is back with Martin as Partridge is standing on his own 10. Partridge, and he's knocked down, and they'll throw the flag. They will throw the flag, and rightfully so, running into him was Newton. Caught him from the side. That's going to be a first down. Well, there are two mistakes in a row by the goal, leading by 14, giving the ball back. First, Martin carried the ball to one side, got caught from behind, fumbled it away. Press couldn't do anything with it, couldn't do with anything, and now they try to kick the ball away, and Newton knocks down Parker. I don't understand it because Parker, he has the ball off, but when you go to block a punch, you go four yards in front of the kicker. Just take a look at it. Look how far away he is. Parker's kind of jumped into him, too, a little bit. Personal foul. Winning the kicker, when you put the three in the defense, that's a first down. Calvin Newton doesn't, you don't want to go into the defensive huddle because all of us, you know, Martin returned a punt and fumbled it, gave him the ball back for three more downs. Now they're going to get the ball back again. Newton goes into the kicker, they're going to get it again for at least four more downs. And that's going to make the defense mad because they're tired. Los Angeles would just like to get a yard on first down. The last seven first downs, they haven't gotten anything. Remember, Young is now 0 for 8. And now completes one. Young completes one. Throws it out there to number 83, Dwayne Gunn. We, we saw in the Senior Bowl out of Indiana, where he's an all-Big Ten receiver. A pickup of nine in a second out of one. So Young breaks the eight passes without a completion streak and breaks the first down streak for the last six times they've had a first down of gaining nothing. This is one of those situations, Jim, where the time of possession tells you they've had it. the Los Angeles Express twice. They have not been, been doing anything with the football, but it's going to raise their time of possession. Second down, Kevin Nelson on a handoff from Young. Nelson's got the first down. Nelson, you know, ran the ball on a screen for 69 yards and a score to begin this second half, but he picks up a first down there. 5.55 to go. Denver leading by 14 and apparently rather comfortably. And here comes the hurry up offense by the Express. They've got to wait for those sticks to be moved. Again, Young. We got Nelson. And he's thrown right by Ricky Ellis and over in the direction of Gunn. They were both there. The ball just split the difference. And I said he had Kevin Nelson. Kevin Nelson sitting out here in the flat on the other side, his left side, all by himself. And Young was looking straight right all the way. David Hersey checks into the lineup. He's caught a pass tonight, number 81. Not thrown to too much. 5.35 remaining in the fourth quarter. A damp night, but a good night for the goal. Young wide left here. And Young looking to the left. And now just dropped the ball. That is... An incomplete pass. His hand started forward. That's how wet it is here tonight. But that is rather embarrassing. No one was near him. This one will not make their highlight film, I promise you. Steve Young goes back to throw and watch the ball just slips out of his hands. And I'll bet you every single quarterback in the history of football, this has happened to him at some time or another. But watch what happens. Good watch. Let's see. He hit it right in the back of the head. That's a tough trick. Third down and ten. Gun 
comes wide to the left. Now Kapoor to the left, and Anthony Allen to the right. Young. Rips it here and throws it up. It looked as though he was really conscious of gripping that ball. A little shaky about it. And it's going to be fourth down. I'll tell you, Bruce Thornton hit Steve Young in the back. Watch, watch the acceleration off the line for Bruce Thornton. He's going up against Jeff Hart. But watch what happens at the end of the play. Does he nail him? Oops. Oh, that's called a half hit. Tell you what, like all quarterbacks, though, as he's going down, Young's got his eyes on the ball to see whether or not it was caught. Young is 2 of 14 in the second half, 8 of 23 in the game. Not a good night. Four wide receivers now on fourth down. They are going for it. They have to. Another high snap. Young back. He needs plenty. He's got his man Malcolm Moore. Not for the first down. Yes, it is, Jim. Now, it's where he catches the ball. The Denver goal drives him back. But... Moore caught the ball at the 40-yard line. It is the first down. The fans actually call. I called it no. The fans thought no. The officials and Paul McGuire say yes. One guard just drove him back. That is the worst one. <laughs> that is the worst call. You know, that Vito Bay Pirelli saying that's the worst call I've seen. And he's an offensive coordinator. Come on, first down from the 40. The 40 of Denver. Now, you know, Nick. We've been saying poor little express, but here they are. They've moved into Denver territory, and they've got better than five minutes to go. And here's a throw out here that is caught by Ricky Ellis and put down by Bungart and Harper. And they're going to have to hurry up offense again. Gain of five, second and five. That's a 35. We talked about the express defense doing so well and getting a little tired. Do you think that Denver goal defense is tired? They've been on the field a long, long time. That's too high, but Young holds it down and has a man out here. And that is Ellis again. And Ellis is put down. Dunn just made sure that was not a fumble. And it'll be third down and short. Uh, Ricky Ellis, he got hammered by three players on that last play. Nate Miller was one of them, and also Harper, 55, was another. 4.15 to go in the game. Denver up by 14. 5.21. Bob Gagliano, the quarterback, they want to keep Penrose okay. Bill Johnson breaks to the outside, and Johnson is knocked down. Out of bounds, stopping the clock with 2.34 to go after picking up a first down out near the 30-yard line. The man John Hadel told us about today, Dwight Drain, the, the strong safety. Watch, he's going to come up and force. This is what happens when a safety meets a guard. George Jarno, the guard, he overruns the play. George Jarno turns him to the outside, and Johnson moves upfield and picks up the first down. Oh, oh. May be an exciting way to make a living, but it's a tough way to make a living. The Gold will have a three-game lead in their division. After seven weeks, if this holds up, George Allen's Arizona team just chasing it. First down and ten, Gagliano keeps it on the uh, ground with Sidney carrying the ball. And looking to George Allen and Arizona, they've got to go play New Jersey. Now there's something, Paul, three game lead over Arizona. And whereas Denver gets at Pittsburgh, Arizona, down by three, has got to go play at New Jersey next week. That's tough for George Allen's group. It is tough. And I, we talk about Dwight Drain. Watch what happens now with John Arnold, number 84, comes down. They, he not only wipes out Drain, but the official. Watch this. John Arnold gets oh. the pop there. There goes oh. the official. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but you got your, you got your shorts dirty. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. We, we apologize <laughs> to John Pimberto, the umpire. I know it hurt, it also messed up those pants. But a flag, remember, down way backfield at the 23. And they're going to walk back. But what a play by Johnson. We will repeat again, as you see the signal from Bill Parkinson, that Bill Johnson has carried the ball only twice all year. He has kept loose tonight. That 31-yard run is going to be called back. He's already scored a touchdown, and at last look was averaging better than seven yards per carry. Jim, you know, we, we've shown a couple plays on Dwight Drain, and he's a rookie. And near the end of the game, they know they're going to run the ball, and he's not forcing with authority. And he got caught up again the last time. Uh, 
It's going to happen to the young man. You got to be awake. Illegal block. Number 41 on the offense. That's Bo Matthews. Second down. All right, here's Dwight Drain again. This is the Dwight Drain story. Number, it's number 33. Okay, now he sees the run. He knows they're going to run. He's going to come up to fill. And here comes Jarno again, number 66. He's in his face, and it doesn't end here. Dwight Drain gets knocked around. Johnson is already to the outside. And then here comes Dwight Drain again. Now he's going to miss again. And finally, Wayman Henderson is the man that almost stops Johnson with help. Coming down to the two-minute mark. Time for this play. Big pitch back to Sidney, and Sidney gets a couple of yards. It'll be third down, and better than 15 yards. 156 to go. This game, you'd have to say, belongs to Denver, the Pacific Division's leading team with a three-game. That's right, so we can see David Martin, all USFL last year, return that punt. First ever return this year, 79 yards. The score at the time was 14 to 7. Martin hauled it in on the 21-yard line and was away and has won our Menon MVP award, $1,000 to the college or university of his choice. And here's David Martin, and this is what one of the things because they got Denver right back into the football game. They did, did miss the extra point, but look at David Martin. That's something you don't do, young guys, when you're out there running with a punt return. Is hold the ball in one hand out in front of you because someone can slap it away. But David Martin, there you are, young man. Great job. He'll go into the books for this year. That was when it was raining hard. He was there with his cohorts and has a right to feel pride. Well, he's number one in his division anyway. 156 left. 35 21. Third down. And 18 to go. Time off the clock, giving the ball to Sydney. Sydney comes not come close to getting the first down, keeping it on the ground. The Express say they want timeout. They're two touchdowns behind, but in the land of the two-point conversion, you never do know what could happen. There could be a return for a touchdown. There could be a fumble or an innocent. Well, I doubt that they would throw the ball. A fumble. That could score again. So the Express youngsters that they are are taking every available opportunity. Sending back Anthony Allen. And Bush will pump the ball away. Mitch out his own 25. Jim, and I don't think the LA Express will go after this punt because they should get pretty good field position out of it. The wait is not only for the timeout, but Sydney, the 11th man they need, is just now coming back on the field. Tired. Tired. And now Gort standing back inside his own, well, it's inside his own 10 now. Allen is up here at 40. Maybe they are going to go after it. Yeah, they are. Oops. They're not going to get it. Chance to return from the 35. Oh my, is he in trouble? But if he gets out this way, no, he better go down. No, he gets to the 36 and down he goes. Sullivan is the first man to hit him, and Sullivan is down at the 30 yard line. I I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken, there may be 25 Hamp Hill, Jim, that came down first, the first man, and he's the man that really messed up the punt return. Is that that Hamp Hill is 25 at Hamp Hill? See, he's the one that to just turn Anthony Allen around. Now he gave, gets ch a chance for the rest of his team to get down there and make the play. But it looked like he popped that shoulder when he did it. That would be about the only serious injury. A bizarre game, mostly in the first half. With the fumble setting up scores, the punt return, two players disqualified, one from each team. But the Denver Gold about to win this ball game, apparently, with the ball at the 36 for the Express. And a Denver man down Hemp Hill on the field. Los Angeles goes back to the Coliseum where they're 0-4 with young and hopefully better weather than they had tonight, going against a team very young, not as young as the Express Memphis, led by Walter Lewis. You'll see it at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And then on Monday, Paul and I get back together way down south in New Orleans and Tampa Bay comes to town at a 9 o'clock Eastern time. We will see New Orleans leading their division along with Birmingham at 6-1 and one against Tampa Bay that edged over the 500 mark with a defeat of Oakland over the weekend. They're now 4-3, and three, and they're still working 
on Hemp Hill, and they're bringing out the stretcher for Hemp Hill at there the 30-yard line. There's the hit, Jim, on, on Anthony Allen Hemp Hill, and I don't. It, it looked like his shoulder, but they are bringing the stretcher out. Like he fell on that right shoulder. Well, he, he hits Anthony Allen with his shoulder. And, boy, I don't even want to speculate on, on something like this, but just take it. Oh, you know, well, that's just his neck. His neck is neck. And now you see him come down on that right shoulder. What what caused the injury, we don't know. Now you're talking about us in New Orleans. You know, you got crawfish, you got oysters, barbecued shrimp. You're getting hungry, your mouth's starting to water. Come on. What you got to <laughs> say is you got Johnny Walden, John Reeves, Marcus Dupree, Gary Anderson. That's Monday. Oh. Final score in the other game played tonight. Houston. With Jim Kelly injured, but coming back to have a field day is now four and three. They're only two games off the pace behind Michigan. And surprisingly, Oklahoma's only one game off the pace in that central division of the Western Conference. And Washington is now 0 and 7, losing that ball game. And the concern now is for the fifth defensive back, Daryl Hemphill, out of West Texas State, who went down on what seemed to be an easy play, just came down, popped his man, and he is up now. Okay. He's up, Jim, and his teammates are smiling. He's shaking his head. He's going to walk off by himself. It was his neck. I watched the shot. Watch his neck. Hit Anthony Allen. I thought it might be a shoulder, whether he hit and fell on it or not, but it was his neck. He got up, shook his head, and the nice part about it, when they had the camera out there, all of his teammates were just smiling. He's fine. He's going to have a headache, I'll tell you that. Well, the man who came up as though he just scored a touchdown was Elmer Bailey, and what he was signifying was we're winning this ball game, and Darrell is okay. Well, here is Young, the leaguer Steve Young, not the kind of debut he had last week against the Generals. Actually did better when the rain was falling. When he fell behind, he got a tough time. Puts it out there, now Malcolm Moore, and Moore is across the 50-yard line. And they'll move the sticks, and they will call time to move the sticks with 1.24 left. Newton put him down. Newton's had a good night on defense. But David Martin had a better night, and he is our men and MVP. The referee just stands there, and he waits until the change is set, and then he'll go on the ready. Here, watch him. His arm will go. Okay, that's it. Start the clock again. across the middle, Malcolm Moore works again, another first down, down to the 35-yard line. They had sold over 30,000 tickets for this ball game, and only a little bit better than 19,000 showed up at game time. It had been raining for three hours, with the threat of it changing the snow. The wind was up to 25 miles an hour, and the temperature was 30 degrees. That's why about 11,000 did not show up. Young on first down. Now getting the impressive statistics. He needs a big play as the man. Oh, my God! Dropped the football, didn't get it at all. Jojo Townsell is going to be shut out tonight in the pass catching department. He was a leading pass catcher last weekend against the Generals with five for 55 yards. Jojo Townsell went up in the air. Steve Young saw him wide open. That ball hit him right in the hand. Steve Young isn't about to run yet. He could have run with the football, but there's really no sense in it this time. And then see he'll move up in the pocket. Just be patient. He's Jojo Townsell. Townsell downfield. Steve Young said, I hit you with the ball. Catch it. Second out and 10. Playing off the string here. The ball game <laughs> was wild for 30 minutes, I'll tell you. Young going deep and no catch by Malcolm Moore. With 56 seconds to go. Double covered back there. And one of the men double covered was David Martin who had that punt return for the 79 yards. David Martin just about took Malcolm Moore's head off when he was reaching for the ball. Now it is third down and 10. 56 seconds left. And we'll repeat again that Denver will go on to play at Pittsburgh, then at New Orleans, and then get Birmingham at home. So season's about half over. It's a long way to go. Young and throws it out here for Hersey coming out of the backfield. And Hersey makes the catch, but not quite enough for the first down. We said also, Los Angeles goes home next Saturday to play Memphis, and we will have that on ESPN 4. We got a timeout by the officials now. Timeout, Los Angeles Express. John Hadel, coach of 
to the Los Angeles Express, the former coach of the Rams right behind him, walking out of the picture, Ray Malavasi. And on this side of the field, the man who gives picnics for his team every Thursday, who said they just simply took too much time, other coaches did when he was playing, keep you around for eight or nine hours, usually about four. He uses the four center home, everybody's friends, and he's got a winning ball club. Jim, six and one record after seven games. You think that maybe some people are going to take notice of what he's doing? And, and, and he's, he's proving, as far as in his situation, that it works for his team. Yeah, I got something. That game next Sunday at Pittsburgh has been changed to 2.30 Saturday. 2.30 Saturday. That is a short work week for Denver going against the team that gave New Orleans all they could handle. They got to go to Pittsburgh on Saturday. So the schedule has been changed at Three Rivers and they'll play on a Saturday. Denver will celebrate tonight, but have to go right back to work for the short work week. 41 seconds left. No timeouts left for L.A. Gun wide to the right. Young has Kevin Nelson out there, and Nelson's got another first down. And 32 seconds to go. He had Kevin Nelson on the outside. They had the blitz on, and they just took the defensive backs. The Denver goal took the defensive backs and dropped them off about 15 yards. Kevin Nelson was wide open. He knew he couldn't get the touchdown, so he got out of bounds to stop the clock, and now they're, they're inside the 10, about the 9.5-yard line. Young, getting to his wide receiver. Back to throw. Now to run, now to throw in the end zone. Knocked away and dead for Hershey. makes the sensational play and he's happy he's smiling he said you see that guy just knock him down or catch him if you can but now Steve Young he could have run with this football there was really nobody in front of him he's trying to throw the ball to Hersey but watch the last minute last second effort by Harper knocks the ball down at this point Young at one time over eight is 16 for 37 267 yards one touchdown no interception Flips his arm, flag is down, and Young is down. Flips his arm, flag went down. You can see Thornton getting. I don't know if he's the man that went off side or not. Yes, he was. Thornton got a great jump. That's why he got him. He just ran right past Jeff Hart. But Jeff Hart couldn't do anything. He's just standing there waiting, and, and, and Thornton was already gone. 15 seconds left. Watch how fast that Bruce Thornton is, is, is in Steve Young's face. There he is. That's why he got there is because he was offside. When they ride of this game, they will talk of the 79-yard punt return by Number David Martin. on the defense. Second down. And then by two kickoffs in succession, each fumbled by the express that led to touchdowns, all of which brought Denver from behind into the lead, which they never gave up. There's Young. Make it. Goes out of bounds at the one foot line. Seven seconds to go. Remember the Holiday Bowl we had on ESPN? It was Brigham Young against Missouri, and Young threw the ball to the other side and then got a pass back for the pass pass he ever caught, and then he ran it in for the winning touchdown in the last second. This time there was no pass, and he almost got a touchdown. Jimmy tried to drag his leg over the goal line. It doesn't make any difference whether that goes over or not. The ball has to go over the goal line, and that ball is sitting right on the goal line, and they've got seven seconds. Young, we gave you his passing statistics. He's averaged about six yards per carry tonight. Get their all-time high for the year. And here's Young on a bootleg play, and he jumps into the end zone. <laughs> Don't you love it? With no time left on the clock, they will simply kick the extra point, and this ball game will be over, or go for the two, whichever they choose to do. I would, for, just, just for argument's sake, you just go for the two. Why not? That's right. 35-27, they've never scored more than 14 points before tonight. Kevin Nelson gets a great block for him. Watch what happens. 
Kevin Nelson gets the block, and Steve Young is going to jump over top of him. Right here, there's the block on the outside. Steve said, I'll go in even though my socks are falling down. <laughs> the socks are down around his ankle. He's had a tough day, but he's going to get Kevin Nelson to give him the great block right here on the outside. Knocks down Nate Miller, number 23. Steve Young said, I'll take touchdown. A big play has beaten this team tonight, and congratulations to the Denver Gold for their three-game lead in the Pacific Division of the Western Conference of the USFL. And our reminder, again, as you take a look at the score there and before this conversion attempt, that Paul and I will be in New Orleans on Monday night, Tampa Bay at New Orleans, and Don Heinrich and I, this Saturday, will watch the same express play Memphis at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Now he has Tony Bodie in the backfield with him. Why not run the same play? It worked last time. Point for the two. Time has already expired. Young throws it out here for Hershey. No good. Ball game. Now they put time back on the clock, Paul, and say they're two seconds left. So we will get a kickoff. The clock had one down. They put time back on the clock, and we'll get a kickoff. That's the four seconds they cheated him out of in the second half when he kicked off. But Steve Young going off with Durrett, one of his offensive linemen. He's had a busy night tonight, throwing the ball 37 times. John Hadle and company on one side of the field have one problem. This man, Frank Morton, the coach of Denver, has another problem. Short work week. Pittsburgh after a remarkable showing against New Orleans going back home. A Saturday afternoon game halfway across the country. But it's nice to be a division leader with four wins in a row and six out of seven on the year. The Express will be two and five. And John Hadle will be looking to do better against Memphis. And don't count out Memphis. The showboats haven't been winning, even though they did upset Jacksonville. But they have been playing very good, tough, aggressive football. John's going, phew, let's get this one over with. We're going to have an onside kick, but it won't make any difference because there's only two seconds. And if they fall on the ball, the clock's going to run out anyway. But you got to try. Can you catch it in midair and run with it all the way for a touchdown? That roll? Yes, indeed he can. One of those interceptions was returned by Dwight Drain for a score. So they had 12 passes in the first half, Jim, and in the eighth and second half, they did what they wanted to do with the ball. Just drive that. Here it comes. They're going to pull up the onside kick. And it oh. didn't, well, it didn't go the necessary 10 yards, but it makes no difference. They may say that the man jumped. Let's see what they do say. I'm going to tell you, 34-4, who was Johnson for the Denver goal. Might have been offside. That's what I'm saying. They have jumped past the restraining line yes, indeed. of 10 yards. Anticipated. See, he could... The he penalty could, is declined. That's right. Well, he wasn't Denver's offside. Denver's ball. Offside on the kicking team. Well, the penalty is the declined. Okay. Denver's ball. First. There's still one second. I know. They got to go out and do something for one second. Gagliano comes out. But this ball game is over. That bizarre, bizarre... Second quarter, we'll repeat one more time, a 73-yard pass play to Kelvin Williams with a score at the time 14 to nothing. Williams ran away from everybody, it's 14 to seven. David Martin, our men and MVP, returned a punt for 79 yards, and then the shambles really set in with a score 14-13. Gray fumbled a ball. It was picked up and taken in for a pass, then another kickoff, Off and Bodie. on the receiving team. Well, Penalizing five yards and kick over. I we was were right. right. We were right. I said we. That's yes, right. Another fumble. And then Johnson took it in from six yards out. So that second quarter was the ball game. Look at John saying, you know, let's get it straight. I'm freezing. And the statistics again. Jimmy, you know what's amazing? Now that thing was kicked off when the guy received the ball. Let's reinforce that thing that happened to you before. And I'm going to bring it up. Because the opening half, second half kickoff, four seconds were off the clock because the ball was kicked out of bounds and nobody touched it. This time the ball is touched. There was only two seconds on the clock and there's still a second on the clock. But that's the man on the field that's doing that, the clock, the man that's running the clock. Steve Young, 16 for 37, scored a touchdown, threw for a touchdown, ran for 34 yards. Johnson was the leading ball carrier tonight for the other team, Denver, 10 carries. Five times more than he carried before tonight. 57 yards and a touchdown. Penrose was 12 with 22, as we saw. 
And Young, well, it's only his game. second game as a pro, and he's got a long way to go. And now we will try again. And there's the ball. Paul lifts up again. The difference right now. The ball game is over. Oh, bizarre ball game. Big story. Denver now leads this division, the Pacific Division, by three games. Big story in the game, Jim, second quarter. 25 points. No score for Denver in the first quarter. 25 in the second quarter. It broke the back of the LA Express. But there are some positive things that will come out of this ball game. Greg Morton is doing something right with his approach. He's got another win. I'm Jim Simpson. Hello with Paul McGuire saying goodbye from Cold Mile High Stadium. Denver wins 35-27.